Well, hello there, everybody. How art thou doing this fine day? Saturday, technically. Oh, God. Sorry, I'm just half asleep. It's been one of those days where you just want to, like, go back to bed, like, four or five times over the course of the day. Anyone ever have those days? All right, let's throw my headphones on real quick. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Oh god, sorry. Give me a second, I gotta collect myself. Alrighties. You're covering from the flu, dude. That sucks. Flus are no joke and they're never fun. Sunday already in Europe. Um, questionable life choices. I popped in briefly, and I saw some of what was going on in chat, and I am utterly concerned about Alan Whale and what's going on there. <laughs> hey, the red skin. Oh, so the red jacket, it's just a pre-order bonus uh, skin for it. But anyway, so... Let's go ahead and get all the fun stuff out of the way for the start of this. Um, if this is your first time finding the channel, I just wanted to say hello. My name's Dean. We mostly do um, video analysis and essays on the channel, but occasionally we do place some games live. And right now we are working on the final draft of Alan Wake 2 and really focusing on the changes that were made between the base game and this one. That being said, we will be basically spoiling everything in the Remedy Verse, including Max Payne, Quantum Break, the original Alan Wake, and Control. But I do not know anything about the changes, so we'll figure that all out together. Wake has more information. Oh, he does. I need to keep questioning him. He looks like he has a migraine, is what he looks like to me. Let's see. Oh, there we go. The cult of the tree has the clicker Wake told me about. They're a part of all this. You mistyped Alan Wake as Alan Whale, and then it just went from there. You know what? That's how some of the weirdest, the coolest things happen, let's be it's honest. It's all on the page. The clicker. The cult. Okay, I'll head to Watery and find this trailer. Casey, you stay here and keep an eye on Mr. Wake. Got it. No, you need me there. No dice, pal. This is an FBI investigation, and I don't see a badge on that flannel. Don't diss the flannel. Ever. Ever. Oh, uh, sorry. Welcome. Just imagine the bartender just watched me break the door okay. down out of nowhere. Cat's favorite deer fest clothes. Go. The yarn puppet monstrosity. The yarn puppets. Oh, well. Stop Stop the coffee world voted Washington's Yay. best coffee this themed amusement the park. Time. All of our attractions are found. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is important. It keeps going on by itself. It's keeping me awake all night. 
Yes, sir. I'm terribly sorry. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna walk outside real quick because there's a lot going on, unfortunately. So essentially, what that guy's complaining about is the TV set. Damn it! There is so much going on. I am sorry. I can't get any words out. So we're going to take all three of these little by little. <laughs> Cranberry juice and crackers do not sound like it goes together, just saying. She's dead. Alright, now I can start talking again. <laughs> Freaking Tapio, he's an absolute legend. Alrighties, so basically this guy has been uh, having the TV in his hotel, the lodge room right here, turning on and off in the middle of the night since he got into town. Now, bear in mind, this is also the guy that ended up in jail recently, and we don't know what was going on with him. Is there anything else I can help you with, sir? The, Would you like a compliment? The problem tonight? with the TV turning on and off in the middle of the night, personally, it sounds like a night spring situation. Because we've had in the past where the TV will just flip on randomly playing Night Springs. And we know there's a DLC involving Night Springs, and I'm curious if... Accidentally that dude's somewhat involved in one of the episodes. And then of course we have room 103... That we can't get into, which frustrates the shit out of me. Hello? Tammy didn't want me to come, I can tell. Not like the trip is even helping. I thought getting out of the city would inspire me, but Bright Falls is just a bunch of trees and empty storefronts. I need to find something. I'm tired of writing one-act plays about how shitty the world is. I thought scathing social commentary would make me feel like a real artist, but I don't know. It's not me. I want to write something weird. Something really out there. Something authentic. But what? Fuck this town. I don't even no, want to get into what happened last night. It's weird, though. Sitting here in the hotel room, some pieces are starting to fall together. An idea for a new play. A space cult. Burning down the galaxy in some misguided search for TBD. A lone man, an artist, wandering the stars until his destiny puts him straight into the cult's path. All black cast, a musical, a rock opera. And there's also one, this right here, which tells us that someone kind of got abducted. Yeah, Mazlan, that's what we're here for, to look for the changes in the story. And with that in mind, let's listen Ed to this. Ed hadn't been the same since his latest show had closed. This wasn't the first time one of his productions had shuttered early. Scathing social commentary in a one-act play wasn't exactly filling seats. 
When Tammy told him she was taking a research trip to Bright Falls, he decided to tag along. Ed told her he wanted to find inspiration. Really, he just wanted a break from the city. But it was true that he certainly needed to find something. A voice, a direction, an idea, something authentic to himself. Ed knew he couldn't keep using Tammy's money to fund his playwriting. After the argument with Tammy, Ed stormed out of the diner and drove their rental car back to Cauldron Lake to prove a point. Now standing in the dark woods, the sun hidden by the trees, Ed wished he could remember what that point was. Something about masculinity. He cursed at himself and turned to go. Suddenly, he was blinded by a light in his face. Voices shouted and hands pushed him to the ground. Ed struggled in vain. So there's a couple ways to look at what happened here at the end. Like, it, what uh, Questionable is saying is, upon reflection, you think it's actually the FBC apprehending him, which is entirely possible. Um, I think we're intended to think that he was taken by the cult, but at the same time, we know now that the cult isn't just killing random people. They're not just grabbing people and blah, 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 blah. So it would make more sense. But during the first playthrough, it kind of leads you in that direction. But if he's getting inspired by a story and starting working on some kind of like space opera, I'm wondering if legitimately there's going to be a space opera in his near future. And then here's Tammy's section. Tammy tapped her pen on her notebook. Alan Wake had ridden this same ferry into town when he arrived. This was his entry That's into correct, Bright Megalodon. Falls. His first steps across the threshold. She wrote that down. She always found it helpful to walk in the victim's shoes. Do what they did. See what they saw. It added great color to the book. Tammy felt raindrops on her face. God, again? She pulled up her hood. The rain just kept coming. She missed New York. So far, this hadn't been the simple research trip she pictured. First, the incident at the lake end the fight with Ed. It's not surprising tempers got hot. They were both on edge after what had happened. Tammy had said some things. Things she regretted. She looked out over the harbor. A chill passed through her. She hoped Ed wouldn't do anything stupid. And we completely, unfortunately, missed the uh, beer commercial and it did not spawn because I ran away from the TV set. I mean, there's still a lot of little minor bugs like that that need to be worked out. So because I wasn't sitting here watching it, it's no longer in our collectible screen. So, sorry guys, we don't get to see Yako drinking wine with the turtleneck like an asshole. Unfortunately. So I do remember, the, um, weirdly enough, in my the base game, I was did not come across Starlight Symphony, but during my second playthrough, we did find it. All right, and there's a little scene over here, I think it happens right now, that we missed during my first run through and I wanted to show you guys because I found it really interesting. It's about the guy that was in prison. Um, let me check and see, so there's nothing more over there. Oh dear diner, still can't do anything. So there's a lot we can't do right now. Maybe it's just me, but I miss the times before we had, you know, digital content where the game shipped and it was in workable condition and that's all you got. And if there was a bug in it, well, you just lived with it. Because <laughs> you just get like an NES cartridge and that's all you got. Anyway, so one of the guys in How prison... How times do I have to tell you? She's gone missing. Missing. Well, sure she's not just avoiding your calls? Why would she do that? I'm a lovely person. Yeah. Okay, fine. This guy right here. The Listen to him. Sky. I don't like it. The eye in the sky. Staring at me. Staring at me. The eye in the sky. It's staring at me. And he's experiencing this in his dreams. Ah. Help. Turn it away. Turn it away.
Come on. You got more dialogue, I know. Mm. A little cuckoo, right? Uh, more than a little. Okay, I guess that's really is all he has to say. But yeah, he's currently involved. What the heck is this eye he keeps talking about? I don't think I want to know. <sighs> Better let sleeping dogs lie. Anyone wonder if this has to do with Night Springs? Like, I'm seriously under the impression that a lot of the random plot threads that never get explained in the game is going to be tied to the Night Springs DLC. Excuse me. It's coming for me from the dark. It's coming. Whoa. Ah. Go away. Sorry. Mosquito. No, mosquito. Go away. See, this guy's having reoccurring dreams of an eye in the sky following him around. Now, I've heard a couple hypotheses on this. One of them is trying to argue that he's experiencing the former. Because that is an Eye of Light. And other people are saying it's the Eye of Mordor because, of course, Barry has his Eye of Mordor. Now, I think it, like, I don't, I can't really say one way or another. I would say that the former is probably the best hypothesis right now without further information. But yeah, like, I, I, because there's a lot of ambient weirdness. Then you have the bird lady, then you have the other gal that's just kind of, like, talking to herself, standing over the, um, in the park. And there's just, like, a, and then there's the, uh, paranormal investigators over here, which one of the girls went missing. So let's go talk to these ladies. So there's three paranormal investigators that came into Bright Falls. These three over here. And one of them goes missing by the end of the game. I don't remember which one, though. I swear I brought my full kid along. Jules, you didn't forget to pack the EMF reader, did you? Why would I pack your gear? I've got my own to worry about. Great. Now how am I supposed to measure the energy signatures emitted by paranormal manifestations? So yeah, it just feels like there's a bunch of random Night Springs episodes that's going on over the course of the game. I can't wait to hit the haunts. We should check the town out first. You know, do research. Interview some locals. Get the feel of the place. Not before I find my frickin' EMF reader. And since there's gonna be a lot of random standalone episodes that Alan and uh, Mr. Door worked on, I'm wondering if they cross over with these other random side stories. Yeah, Amar, like, that's the only th like... That's the only description that I can think of, of the eye in the sky being former, but the, why he would be seeing the former in his dreams, but also where did the form, where did former go at the end of uh, Foundation? Because it's, it looks as though former broke out into the Foundation. I mean, he broke out of the ast or I should say it broke out of the astral plane. Oh no, oh no, oh no. And then we have the bird lady. What will become of my birds now? Where will they go? Who will feed them? Fly away. Find a happier place. Go while you still can. You missed a... Uh, Kenya, I think the biggest thing you missed is just the dude talking about seeing an eye in his dreams. That's following him and staring at him. Alright. So I think that's pretty much all we can do here right now. Let's go ahead and head over to Watery. Yeah, but the thing is, we only saw former in the foundation. Hey, how's it going? It's going well. How you doing? And if my hypothesis about the foundation and the dark place are the is accurate, then it would make sense if former made it to people's dreams. Yeah, the thing in the jail. I missed it entirely during my first run through. Well, if you're in the dark, Megalodon, the only thing you see really is the eye.
Ezekiel, I'm gonna say that yeah, yes, TJ is canon. In front of Wake, <laughs> Just for the fun of it. Are you sure this is a good idea? Going on your own? Assuming we believe the page, I need to check this out. We need to find the cult. Anyone we meet here could be a member. And this scratch guy. The evil doppelganger? It must be true, or else this guy can't write for shit. The quality of his writing aside, if this page turns out to be true like the rest have, this could be a breakthrough. We might solve this thing before a backup even arrives. Yeah, but they're taking their time, so just be careful out there. Meanwhile, I think me and Wake will have a chat. Maybe I can shake something loose. Okay. But remember what happened with the salt shaker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, real funny. The page placed me in a trailer somewhere in Watery. I should ask around. And here we go. By the way, Kenita, how's the the uh, script going for the uh, video idea you're working on? Hey there, Draco. I'm doing pretty good. We're just wandering around a bit. Hey, what did you used to say your dream job was as a kid? I bet it wasn't dock worker. I don't know about all that. Do, 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 do. The flooding is even worse here. More like underwatery. I'll have to tell Casey that one later. Funny. Um, so far, no. I don't think I've seen more control-related stuff yet. But we'll we'll keep an eye out. Watery's like, definitely quaint. Like, frankly, I don't expect there to be a lot of new stuff. I, I kind of presumed, like, 95% of the game would be the same. Good day. Good day. I bet they have good fish here. Ooh, yes, give me the arrows. So, hey. Oh, you rascal. Comes down to expectations, to right? There's only so many times I can keep fixing the same way. As long as you keep your expectations low, you won't be disappointed, right? I know a lot of people were kind of expecting that a lot was going to be different in this, and it didn't happen that way. But hey, I never really expected much. Because let's be honest, when you're working on a a project, when you do a second draft, most of it's going to be the same. You're just tweaking a, a thing here and there. A trailer park. Ilmo Koskela. He's that tour guide we met at Cauldron Lake. I need to find him. Hello there, Blum. Hello. Do you have a second? Bloom. Ugh. Long time and no see, Miss Anderson. Uh, Tor and Odin are not here. They are uh, old tricksters always sneaking off. Sorry, no, I, I wanted to ask you about something else. Do you live around here? I live in Bright Falls. You have seen me around. I am Mr. Blum. You call me Vladimir. I work at the nursing home. I take care of your old people. We are on day trip, music, sauna, the good times. I bring them here in the bus. The elderly are very important. And it's a very nice bus. Thanks. Mm hmm. So a little detail that I thought was really cool. The logo for Valhalla is kind of the same as the uh, tree that's down in the um, subway tunnel tunnels. Hi! Does anyone else do that where you're just, like, watching someone walk by that's not paying attention? You just scream high at them? Maybe it's a small town thing. A trailer park is a good place to look for a trailer. Keep it simple, Saga. Do you think his name is in reference to Blumhouse Productions? Uh, what is that, Melissa? I'm not familiar with that. There's a boy. Hmm. 
Okay then. Catch you tune. I mean, got some good tango. Hey, Rose. Let's just vibe for a little bit. Sounds like Scratch. Yes, Paolo, I did find the optional dialogue down the lake house. Like, I could literally just chill here. A anyone else, when they were younger, um, before you had, like, the internet to pull up game music, would just pull up a game and leave it playing while you did some homework or something? This is one of those scenes where I would literally pull it up, just leave it on the TV for, like, an hour. He has been called by many names. Raised to a god of dark myths. Old Scratch Shatan, our savior. A black cloud boils inside his skull. Explodes out and rages in the night. Yep. Oh, I would hope so, Jinx, because he is finished. I'm actually working on getting that pronunciation down. Uten or something along those lines. To the bottom of the well into a pile of corpses. No one will make it alive through this night. In his dark broom he writes. Issues you into this verse from his fever dreams. Are you talking to us? See, the question I'm trying to do with this tune is, who is the singer's, like, what voice is the singer? And who is he talking to? Because you, even his, like, you're saying you, 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 you. Is he talking to Saga specifically? Oh, just, uh, Butter, basically, the FPC actually responded this time. Rather than just ignoring you. I think it's more like you to... Instead of you, but you. I'll have to pull it up. Hey there, no, no. All right, let's get going. Hey, Rose, what's up? Excuse me. Do you not go Ah, oh, he's in the middle of his show. I wonder if I'm the first FBI agent to ever get shushed. Let's be honest. Uh, Rose just does what she wants. <laughs> Yeah, I get the feeling, too, that uh, Wolf, that he's speaking to us directly. What did the FBC at the Lake House say? Nothing much, Megalodon, just telling us to go away. But in the base game, they never spoke to us. It just was static. Um, let me see what we got here. Let's move some of this over. You know what, let's hold on to an extra one. And let's move some of this. I'm going to save a lot of the rifle ammo for the dark summoning fight. Okay. Alright, am I experiencing the inventory bug? What is the inventory bug, Jackson? So far, I haven't really had any issues. Alrighties. Terrifying, strange dives into the dark minds of the artist's mind. So the whole thing, which I find interesting here, is, yeah, it's a film by Thomas Zane, which is Tom the Poet, which 
the filmmaker Zane says that this is one of his characters, but remember, it's based upon a novel by Alan Wake. So this is based upon Departure, meaning it was written after Departure. And not before. Okay, Zane's blah, 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 blah. One of the interesting thing here is that we have the guest lecture by Thomas Emerson. Do we all remember Mr. Emerson? If you saw my most recent uh, video, you will should know all about our good friend. Now, the thing with Emerson is, yeah, he was a video game a designer. For Mayor Setter is a vote for everyone. For water. Mayor Setter will stand up for justice. He absolutely will. Mayor Setter, you know, Mayor Setter for president. Let's be real. In New Game Plus, it didn't expand. That sucks. Um... Yes, Wolf. So, Game, I have a question about how absolute do you think Alan's story is, or do people still have the option of free will? Um, so, the thing is with the how Alan how writing works is that not everything is described. You don't, like if you read a book, like just pick your favorite book for example. Um, are there things that the characters do off script? I mean, they don't describe them. You know, like going to the bathroom or eating half the time, or what have you. So there's a lot of things that happen that the characters have full will over. Free will over, I should say. But anything that's currently on page, the memories are going to be altered to match it, so they kind of play those out. That being said, Saga is the one that has the free will. She's the chaos element in the narrative. Which is good. I think that's the only reason this story is going to be successful, is because we have the chaos element that is Saga. Hello. I, I'm, I'm Mom's okay. Mom's family was from Sweden. I've always imagined it kind of like this. Saunas, lakes. Seems nice. What's up, bro? Enjoying the sauna? You bet. The steam is amazing on my creaky old joints. I'm just waiting for Ati to wrap up his show so we can crack open some beers. I've read that taking a sauna is good for preventing dementia. Yeah, and so is beer. Ever heard of the cult of the tree? The half deer, half man monsters? Oh, sure I've heard of them. They're the reason I can't risk taking walks in the forest anymore. If one of them shows up, how am I supposed to get away? I can't run with a bad hip. I'd be killed for sure. I could maybe use my crutches to defend myself. Do you think that'd work? You're the professional. Probably smart just to stay in the sauna for now. Norman. Actually, you know what? Flip flops. At the very least, get some flip flops, buddy. You're walking on frickin' soggy soil. Hey, Sarah. Sauna doesn't fix what ails ya. You're a goner. They also say silence is golden. Yeah, shut up and let me enjoy the day. <laughs> Come on. Here we go. Whew. Hot. I've actually never been in a sauna. I've built plenty of them for uh, some of my customers. I had a customer uh, like four years back that they had a uh, sauna big enough for four people built into one of their RV garages. But I've never actually used one. see what we can do here. Anything? Nope. I do have some weapon upgrades, though. Okay, so mostly it's going to be... Oh, jeez, we actually have the other shotgun. I, did I never realize that we have a, another thing for another shotgun? Sawed off only, but this is for the pump action. Hold the fire button to activate auto-fire mode. Move faster while aiming. 
that's actually really cool. Stand still and aim steadily at the target to drastically reduce kickback and minimize bullet spread for increased damage. Oh my gosh. I completely missed that. Okay. Well, I'm going to increase you. The Taken rushed toward her, but Saga remained where she was, unmoving. She willed the pellets to stay on course to hit the target. The Taken was closer. She waited. Closer. Still, she waited until the very last moment. Saga's an amazing and you would love them. I know, I know some of the gyms we have down here have some. Saga gripped the pump action shotgun, aiming down the barrel. It fit in her hands perfectly. It felt steady. She had it under control. She swung around ready. I don't know how I missed that. I'll be 100% honest. I am kind of shocked with myself. And it's also kind of frustrating because then you're spending stuff to increase this and then you never use that weapon again as soon as you get the pump action. Hmm. Interesting. Well, the thing is, um, SPTZ with a psychotherapist is technically, from our understanding of Zane, is he wrote himself out of existence, so she, ne the therapist never would have found a poet by the name of Thomas Zane. No one knows there's a poet named Thomas Zane. Because he wrote himself out of existence. That being said, some people are still aware of him because he left behind some of his work in the form in the uh, shoeboxes. So, for example, Alan came across it when he was at Cauldron, when he was at the uh, cabin on Cauldron Lake. Um, Samantha Wells came across some of his work out in her town in Ordinary. So, I would almost presume that since that was in the town of Ordinary that Jesse grew up in, that she may have come across um, his work at some point. Hey, Saga! Over here! What's up, boys? Hey, Ilmo. How did your walk in the woods with Steven go? Another satisfied customer. I just hope he remembers to write a good review on the webpage. Great to see you back in Watery Saga. Everyone in town missed you. <laughs> Super nice to see you again, Saga. They act like they've known me for years. This keeps happening. Are you familiar with the cold of the tree? Yeah, we always thought it was an urban legend. Kids drawing creepy symbols to scare each other, but, uh... Now it's gotten pretty damn real, huh? It's terrible what happened. We're all in shock. Well, we're looking into it. Hoping to get things back to normal soon. We're all for that. <laughs> as normal as it ever gets around here. You own the trailer park, right? Mind if I take a look inside? Um, uh, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure the owner of the Watery Lighthouse Trailer Park, me, can help you with that. It's good to have our funniest resident back. Resident? I don't understand what you mean. If this is your way of getting out of any outstanding bills, don't worry. They've been handled. Must be hard coming back to where you and your little girl lived. It's like they remember a different reality. Is the horror story messing with their memories? Well, of course it is. 100%. Uh, what kind of movies do you think... Well, they've only shown Zayn making two different films, but... Who freaking knows? And the whole... Like... I really don't like to try to theorize on Zayn too much, because there are so many overlapping narratives about the character, it's hard to track time back through it. Like, it's a lot easier with Alan, because we have... And the Casey stuff. Like, the Casey stuff, it's a lot easier to track uh, how everything evolved and sprouted. Like, if uh, the, the origin was the seed and the branches started sprouting out of it. With Zane, it's really difficult. Because we don't even know what part of the tree we're looking at when we talk about Zane. One branch may be the poet. One branch may be the filmmaker. One branch may be the one that created a new universe. One branch may be fully fictional. It's just we don't... And we don't know which is which. So it's really, really difficult to try to talk about him. 
So what is Coffee World? You mean you haven't seen our commercial for it? Coffee World is a smooth blend of rides, food, and fun. We even had a real moose. Until recently. Plus, right next to Coffee World is the workshop of our own Kalevala Knights Motorcycle Club. We're busy building the uh, floats for Deerfest. Don't go peeking, though. <laughs> you know, we're saving the big reveal for Deerfest. Uh, technically, on that one, uh, no Dream Asylum uh, on the Threshold Kids thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, actually, Bethany Harrington is the FEC agent that works in parapsychology that worked on the Threshold Kids TV show. But technically speaking, since it is a story, it technically in the dark place could be manifested into reality, so who knows? Imagine if one of the episodes of Night Springs is a puppet show, and we meet Mr. Bones. So... Your commercials. They're more than commercials, Saga. Our goal is to both entertain and educate local viewers about the fine products and services we provide. And, uh, Yako here really comes alive in front of the camera. Really. Fuck off. I'm just there for the free beer. Not sure what Ilmo's excuse is. Hey, I'm writer, producer, co-lead, director. Do yourself a favor and, uh, check them all out. I should make sure I've gotten everything out of profiling. I mean, like, I'm with you on this, Master Morden. What does fictional even mean in the face of the dark place in multiple realities? Because we use the term fiction in its general sense when we're talking about something that's not real. Now, everything that's going on in this is real. So it's... It's really hard to say, like, we're gonna have to, f like, I almost want to find a new word to describe what's going on instead of using the term fiction. Because, let's just say, for example, we have person A, person B. Person A is writing a story that involves person B. Person B is writing a story that involves person A. Does that mean both are fictional? Technically, no. They're both real people. They're just telling stories about each other. But because of the dark place, they can kind of push things along in certain ways, that still doesn't mean it's fiction. As in fake, it's still real. Like, it, a lot of what's like what's going on in this game just feels like a bunch of, bunch of different creator gods all kind of, like, overlapping with each other. It is really difficult to try to piece apart what came from what. Like, I almost don't want to say anything in the Remedy franchise is truly fiction. I mean, even, like, the in the Bureau Book Club, for example, when they're uh, reading Unless You. I wouldn't even call that truly fiction, either. Elmo thinks the cult is just an urban legend. Or does he? There are things that go bump in the night. It's all true. It's all true. Sound the alarm, brother. Gather the troops. Brother. Yako. The shadow of the forest is creeping closer. They don't think it's an urban legend at all. They understand it's dangerous. Ilmo made it sound like I lived here. Does he really believe that? Light's laughter and love will guide you home. Saga and her daughter. Oh boy. Happy faces raise property value. Family comes first, Ilma. We take care of her trailer while she's gone. She's one of us, Yako. Her spare key is safe and sound. The Koskala brothers have happy memories of me living here. This must be the story affecting them. I'll play along for now. I need the key to that trailer. Hey, Dream Asylum. I think Rose's fan fiction has some talent to it. Don't be, don't be mean to our best girl. But, like, yeah, I, I'm with you, Master Morden. We have to define fiction in a relative sense. I mean, a lot of the times we kind of get stuck in the language barrier. And technically speaking, you can have a language barrier even amongst people who speak the exact same language, especially when words can mean different things. I mean, like, one person saying fiction versus another person saying fiction in the context of this series can mean two completely different things. So when we have a conversation and don't explain what the word means, 
we're not speaking the same language in a certain sense. Like, I've been meditating um, recently on the Tower of Babel story, for example, about going down and confounding their language, where we wanted to force humanity to stop doing something, so rather than having them all working together, we separate their languages so they can no longer communicate, and that forces their any alliance they're having to completely shatter, right? But you can have people who, who all speak English who are not speaking the same language because we use words differently. And unless we understand how other people use those words, we can't truly communicate with them. If you understand what I'm saying. All joking aside, yes, I would like to see my trailer. Do you have a spare set of keys? Good for you. Yeah, I have a spare set. They're just over at Coffee World. I'll get them for you, but Yaku and I have to head to Bright Falls. The spare keys are in the gift shop safe. I'll call ahead and uh, have someone get them out for you. Oh, the road's flooded. But if you just follow this trail behind me, it'll lead you there. Perfect. Call Thank the gift shop so they can give Saga a hand. Thank you, gentlemen. Yep. All right, to answer your question, um, Hader Ramos, uh, did Alan create the Hiss in control? No. Nothing. No, the Hiss was there the way before. Like, they existed they're busy. for an unknown amount of time before oh, the invasion even occurred. Now, we do have confirmation that Alan it created the Hiss chant, which is the words that the people were speaking when they were corrupted for all the Hiss agents flying through the sky. But the art book of control, which was written by Remedy, specifically says no, they do not... Alan did not create the hiss. Alan did not create Jesse. Like, the Dark Place can't just create something out of nothing. There's Coffee World. Need to get across the river. What happens is you have a set source of inspiration where in the Dark Place you can see things that happened elsewhere and then ta tag it and say, okay, I'm going to use you. It's like... Like, I'm going to have to release a um, new updated video on the Dark Place and how it functions at some point. But it's not like a crater deity like uh, Demiurge, which Alan refers to himself as at one point, that where you literally create everything out of nothing. It's more that someone can go into the computer's code and move things around a little bit. They can tweak things, but they can't write the code, if that makes sense. Well, like, the interesting thing, Amelia, is that different languages do have different... Uh, for, like different meanings behind words. I mean, like in English, we have one word for love, for example, and in uh, Sanskrit, there's like 27, 28 different versions of love that are all context sensitive. English is a honestly a not very specific and descriptive language. It's hard to get information across and sometimes. What was that? Like, it's debatable if Alan helped to unleash the Hiss Resonance, which I don't think he did. I think when he was younger, he had a dream of the Hiss invasion and what happened with Darling and Trench. FBI, show yourself. And then use that as inspiration to write his uh, episode of Night Springs. And that's why it seems like, oh, he created it. No, he witnessed it and then scribed it. And we kind of have confirmation in this game that that's exactly how all of Alan's work is. He's not creating it, he's just transcribing reality that happens in the future. Oh, guys, there's two of them. Oh, Jesus. Where is he at? Come on. There we go. Beautiful. More people turning into Taken. Is this the cult? Or the story? Or both? Well, Emily, I'd argue it's more about intention. Because there's intention behind words that the language is like... It's kind of like archetypes and symbols. So an archetype is going to be the actual intention behind something versus the word, which is a symbol... To represents that symbol or represents that archetype 
I mean, if we want to get back into, like, God of War level stuff, just think of Brock's, um... Conversation to Kratos about it. it's more about the meaning of a thing rather than the form of a thing. The word is just the form, the meaning is intuitively understood. Another rhyme. A moose and a deer. So I'm going to try to, for the most part, interpret the moose and the deer as watery and um, bright falls. Because these are kind of like the two symbols of the towns, deer fest and moose fest and what they're associated with. I already took care of all this. Beautiful. Wakes says a story will change reality around us. If that's true, then I need to know what's real and what's fiction. I mean, like, I would say Alan is somewhat of a prophet in the sense that he can get unconscious, like, he can get the intuition of things that are going to happen. But at the same time, through the dark place, he... It's complicated. <laughs> That's all I can really say. Hey, dude, how did I get into mythology and all the psychology? Honestly, I've been interested in mythology since I was a kid. Like, no joke. I was that student in class in, like, fourth, fifth grade when we're talking about English and we're reading some of the classics. And I would correct my teacher saying, no, technically that's not true. That's not what happened. Because the professor would start quoting things that happened in, like, the Disney's Hercules rather than the actual mythology. And I'd be like, no, that's not how this works. <laughs> I don't know. I was just always really interested in it. Okay, here we go. The gentle beast with a beautiful crown, that's going to be the moose, runs through the woods with a worried frown. From the hunter he flees between mighty trees to make it out alive. Not a very good one, Dr. Campbell. Um, one can make the argument if the gentle beast with the beautiful crown, the moose, is ref uh, referencing watery. The hunter would be, again, the darkness that's encroaching upon the town, which the Coscola brothers are beating back. If we, there, I think there's a manuscript page that details how their enterprise that they're building here is bringing in tourism, bringing back money, and it's preventing the town from being destroyed and fading away into becoming a, basically a dead town. Because there's a lot of towns out there that one thing leads to another and it, it's just abandoned. Like, you can, it's, it's kind of interesting if you look into the history of some of these abandoned towns that it couldn't work the society there couldn't work anymore the economy just completely vanished so they had to move to other places and that's what's about to happen here so and the hunter would be the thing that's encroaching and causing it to go extinct mm. Mm -hmm. mm. oh shit And this was not here before. Hello there. Jesus. Um, I am going to take this one Another because charm for my I have a feeling I'm going to need that, but I'm not going to pick up the other charms. I mean, I'm just really lucky that I had a teacher growing up that would allow me to correct them for something like that and actually admit, oh, okay, yeah, that... Yes, you're correct. Holy Jesus. Because there's a lot of teachers who will just flat out say, like, no, 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 I'm the teacher, you're always wrong, I'm always right, stop it. Oops.
beautiful. Because nothing's worse than having someone who's there to instruct who believes they're infallible. Because you have to be able to accept when you're ignorant on a thing. And ignorance is actually an interesting term because a lot of people get a little offended when you, the word is used to them. But me, for example, I'm ignorant on a lot of things. I mean, a lot of things. Like, I don't know how to freaking like, build a rocket or anything. It just means I'm not aware of something, and you have- everyone has to acknowledge when they're not aware of certain things. Otherwise, you believe you know everything, and there's no reason to learn anything from there. And I know it wasn't from, uh, the movie, but it just cracks me up every time. Because, like, Bill and Ted was one of those films that, uh, was a big influence growing up, just because I'm a weirdo. If you- if you everyone understands why I say dude all the time, that's why. But yeah, the, uh, Socrates, Socrates Johnson. The only true wisdom consists of knowing that you know nothing. Raise your hand if you got kicked out of a class for correcting a teacher. I've never been kicked out, Black Hat, but that's just ridiculous. I mean, in my opinion, if you can support your evidence showing, yes, you're correct, because anyone can try to contradict another person, but you have to have the backing evidence to say, here's why this is incorrect, and then you all analyze it critically. Yeah, like, I know we use, like, a lot of people use the term ignorant in a negative sense, where it's like you're trying to call someone idiotic. I've never thought of it that way, personally. Rather than saying that, because you're not, people can only make decisions based upon what they're aware of. Like, we all have that mental uh, library in our heads of books on the shelves of things we're aware of, and if you're not aware of something, you can't factor that information into your decision making or into your knowledge base, so it's it's nothing against the person. It's just okay. Well, let's take a There's look at some new information. Stash. Hey there, Bry guy, uh, Bry guy, T guy. I'm gonna say that right one of these times. Thank you so much for the donation, buddy. You disagreed on the difference between irony and coincidence? Interesting. That's an interesting philosophical class at that point. Because I'd have to think on that, to be honest, the uh, difference between the two. Okay. So it looks like we got that there, and we're good. Let's get going. You had a professor snip you in phonetics course for your pronunciation of words that aren't English and saying them in their original pronunciation. Like, going, tra like, honestly, language and its evolution is something that I find really interesting. And how languages evolved, even pronunciations evolved throughout time over thousands of years. It's just a really cool thing. Like, there's like a family tree of languages and how they developed over time, regionally speaking. Okay, let's go ahead. I don't need you right now. Let's move you over here. I'm about to get a lot more arrows, so I'm going to move you over here. I love that we're all that student that would correct their teacher. I mean, if they're incorrect, we want correct information. Like, I would almost argue... Okay, we're going to go on a random lecture. Random Dean rant. But first, let's go read that uh, manuscript page that we just skipped over. We just skipped over this, unfortunately. <laughs> what had kept Watery afloat all these years? 
A century, if not more. The locals knew the answer. Grit. Or as they put it in the language of their Finnish forefathers, Sisu. These days, Sisu was need more than ever. The town was fading. Damn straight. It never quite recovered from the lumber mill shutting its oh, doors. Oh, this is what I was talking about. Now the fishing was drying up as well. Most people had left to find jobs in other towns. Only the most tenacious stubbornly remained. Dug in. Parasites in the body of a terminal patient. Sisu. Some people tried to resuscitate the town. The Koskala brothers double-handedly warded off the impending darkness with their ventures. Coffee World brought tourists, money, and jobs. Coffee-themed fun for all ages. The Kalevala Knights Motorcycle Club built parade floats. The bikers repaired vehicles and volunteered locally. But it wouldn't be enough. Watery needed a miracle. The end of the road was in sight. That was coming fast. Yep. So, I guess if we want to distill this entire conversation about uh, education down to its root, we're going to start talking about tarot again. Um, Hierof Key 5, Hierophant. Now, in some decks, it's referred to as the Pope card, and the whole point of the Hierophant is it's that intermediary force between the divine and humanity. It's the one who's translating the word of God to the people, so to speak. Now, teachers are very much filled a similar role in the sense that you have the facts, you have the truth, you have the philosophy, you have whatever they're trying to teach you, but they are the mouthpiece that takes that pure aspect and then translates it to the students, right? Now, there's multiple variations of the Hierophant in positive and negative polarities where you can be translating it purposely correctly. You can also slightly tweak the information for the purposes of um, impressing a specific intention upon the student that may or may not align with reality. You also have the ones that will lie about what they're teaching. It's, but like, it, again, that's why we use the term the Hierophant because we're talking about translating from the Word of God down to the people. Same situation. So... It's in order to fill that role, you have to be humble and you have to accept when you may be incorrect in your translation. But, anyways, it's moving onwards. Saga was beginning to see why Casey disliked the woods so much. They felt oppressive here. Too many places to hide. The distorted carnival music drifting from the amusement park ahead did not help. What the Koskalis had said about her living in Watery with Logan unsettled her. For the horror story to involve her was one thing, but involving her daughter was crossing a line. Something darted across the path ahead. Too fast to see. Saga drew a weapon. Her eyes searched the woods. A noise overhead. Saga swiveled to look. A local. A man on the ridge above her. No. Not a man. A monster with a hatchet in each hand. It shouted down at her. Hunting season was a bust! Actually, Kenyatta, I am familiar with The Arrival. I love that film. If anyone uh, likes sci-fi and likes language, go see The Arrival. It is actually an incredible, uh, underrepresented film. It's absolutely incredible. Another one of those cult boxes. Oh, it's already open. Shoot. Did I at least get credit for it? Or is it gonna pretend I didn't do it? It's gonna pretend I didn't even open it. Interesting. So I guess we're not going to be able to 100% the collectible screen because this is open. Hmm. Just joined. Where are we at? Existential realism? Nihilism? No. <laughs> hey there, mid two. How you doing? Yeah, th th I mean, that's... That's why we all hang out. You, seriously, you guys are my people. You guys get me, and I appreciate it. 
Because it's hard to have certain conversations like this with a lot of the people I know in real life. Because they're like, huh, what the hell are you talking about? Let's let's go to the freaking grab a motorcycle and let's go dirt biking. <laughs> it's like, come on. I'm, I'm, I like talking weird stuff like this more than other things. I mean, that's one of the things, Kenyatta, you're saying inspired you to make uh, picked, uh, picked in language for your fantasy book. I mean, that's an interesting thing about Tolkien, for example, is he started off making the languages and then wrote the story after the fact. Like, I think he made up several languages over the course of working on that. Okay. Okay. Let's... I'm gonna... St turn my eyes away from chat for a second and get a little bit further because we're not making a lot of progress <laughs> all right nothing there um let's go this way because i do know there is a rhyme one of those nursery rhymes up here and weirdly enough it's the one i always miss for some reason ev like both times i played the game this is the only rhyme that i missed in water is the one right here Main is on the radio! Stop being a jerk! Don't interrupt him. I mean, I think that's the question, Kenya, uh, if this is actually dementia or something else is going on. I have a hypothesis, but until we get to the nursing home, I don't want to say anything. Because I don't remember, but I have, a, I have a thought in my head. More of those rhymes. I mean, if we really want to think about it in a certain way when it comes to people. Like, we can use these nursery rhyme sections as a good explanation for how Alan's powers work. Hey there, Bry guy, T guy. Thank you so much again for the donation. Dude, seriously, you're awesome. I very much appreciate the support, buddy. Because in these nursery rhymes, we only have the pieces we can work on. We have the these characters. So the moose doll, the deer doll, the crow doll, the hero, and the wolf. So these are the characters who are... In, if we're going to translate this over to Alan's work, are real-life people. Now, he can't create new dolls, but he can take the doll and then move them into different story scenarios. So that's... It, it, this is like a good echo of how Alan's powers work. Three... 
three little deers venture to Rome and found a nice place to eat and play. One little deer never came home, and two little deers cried all day. All right, so deers... Actually, now that I think about it... Question. So deers are going to be something associated with Bright Falls, but who are the three deers, and one of them never came home? Question. I just had a random thought. The three paranormal investigators that we saw down in Bright Falls, the three ladies... By the end, they the three of them came to town, and by the end of the game, one of them went missing permanently. Do you think those are the three little deers? Where they all came, one never made it home, and the two deers cried all day. Is that stretching it a little bit too much? Yeah, yeah. Okay, then. And there's the deer running right there. I'm not sure if that's a stretch or not, but it's just a thought that just hit me. And here's the wolf that ate the deer. Oh, you shit! Okay, that's not good. I'm getting into the light, like, right the hell now. Okay, okay, okay. Stay. Yeah, but if we thought the deer and Andersons and Saga, that'd be three, but then again, two of... Technically, all three of them are lost. Okay. And then the, over here is the dead deer. that. There it is. Wow, I missed entirely. Where is that wolf? There it is. Come over here, boy. Come on, start facing me. Get over here. Shite. Shite. Dude, like, I freaking hate these goddamn wolves. At least this will clear some space up. You want to run through ignoring the rhymes and see if anything's different? I don't think that's going to be the case, Master Moradin. But that would actually be next level game design and game direction if parts of the story of the side characters changed. Because, like, let's say, for example, the three paranormal investigators. If we go with the hypothesis of this, this nursery rhyme is related to them, if we never completed this, if all three would be there at the end of the game. That would be some next level freaking narrative right there. The wolves are way worse than the birds. I mean, birds are easy peasy to deal with. Another charm. Good thing Logan made me this bracelet. I mean, birds, you just throw up a flare, boom, you're taken care of. I mean, I think there was supposed to be like a taken bear in the um, first game, or a taken deer. And they decided to cut it from the game. There's another lunchbox. Yay, we got some more fan fiction. Let's do this. I lowered my rifle. Standing on the car's roof, I looked out at the carnage. The zombies had almost won, but luckily I was here. Heroes are sometimes the people we least expect them to be. Now my town was finally safe, thanks to me. I slung the hot piece of iron over my shoulder one more time, hopefully for the last time. The townspeople cautiously emerged from their hiding places, surveyed the same carnage I saw, and cheered my name, and I waved, and they cheered again. 
Now I finally got, could get back to my quiet, unassuming life, reading books and gardening and fiber crafts and being the world's top mycology expert. Suddenly a hand seized my wrist. I looked into the eyes of a sweet, sensitive writer I had known since childhood. A smile spread across his kind, beautiful face, and I felt at peace for the first time since the zombies had first emerged. It's actually really cute, considering we know Rose has been wandering around and killing Taken in her free time. So she's literally writing a fanfiction, but it's kind of what she's really doing at the same time, which is really cute. I mean, that's the cool thing about freaking like remedies uh, narratives in general is you a lot of the characters even if they're not the main characters you want an entire like game dedicated to that character i'd play a freaking rose game 100 you percent know what also would be cool playing a game like about a reach for example where he's like responding to different awes when he was uh, a ranger at the time that'd be freaking cool as hell like it's one of those Universes where you want to get more story about every single character out there. And then Alan and I get super pregnant. <laughs> oh boy. Right now, I kind of wish I did have the rifles just so I could shoot through him. Dang it. You would play a Saga Casey game. I mean, just those characters. Like, honestly, I kind of want to investigate some of their other cases. Because they had that one uh, stabbing case that supposedly happened in an airplane or something like that. The Mile High Stabbing, I think they called it. Like, imagine just another, like, a spinoff of Saga and Casey just doing other investigations. That'd be cool as hell. I mean, like, I'd be down to, what like... Like, have a book series dedicated to that. Or, like, a little mini TV show spot. Barry Wheeler game? Oh, dude. I don't think the world is ready for a game based on Barry Wheeler. It would shatter the internet, let's be real. <laughs> what was the Mile High Strangler? If that's what it is, Leo? Like, I don't remember. I just remember there being, they, them mentioning a case of uh, a murder happening, and they called it the Mile High, which is a term for being in, uh, in an airplane. For other reasons, which, because we are going to keep this chat PG, I'm not going to mention. Another one of those lunch boxes. Hi, hero. I think a few pieces of paper from my private fan fiction project got mixed into some of these statues, but I don't know which ones. I posted some online, and they're getting pretty good reviews, but I'd appreciate if you didn't read them. It's a privacy thing. Um, sorry, Rose. Too late. <laughs> A rhyme about a deer being eaten by wolves. A rhyme was about a moose evading a hunter. Again, so this one just feels like it's the moose is water is evading the encroaching darkness. And the Coscola brothers at center point of that. If the author of these pages wanted privacy, the ship has sailed, I'm afraid. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> More fan fiction with zombies and mycology? Not gonna lie, I'd read more of these. <laughs> hey, no worries, Dream. Thanks for hanging out, dude. You'd like to see more FPC-related things uh, investigating remote AW cases like on the road of X-Files? Dude, like, no joke, Bangarang. Like, I fully think that Remedy could produce a TV show kind of like Fringe or um, X-Files that focuses on FPC rangers just running around doing random investigations. Legit, I'd be down for that. And even the ones that aren't actual paranormal, like actual altered world events, because they investigate things that aren't that sometimes, where they show up and it's just like, oh, well, that ends up not being that. Like, X-Files does that too, where they realize, oh, no, this is just a normal person doing things. But, it, like, it, it seems like a, a paranormal thing, but ends up not being a paranormal thing. Hey, Pixel Shift, how you doing? Hope everything is going well on your end. Alright, we're getting ready to head up to Coffee World. 
the cheeriest amusement park I've ever been to. Hey guys, we found one working outhouse. One. I'm very excited. Scratch stalked through the forest. A terrifying dark presence in the night, more sensed than seen. Darkness boiled in his skull, like a storm cloud crammed into a bottle. The woods were alive with those he had taken. They were coming with him, directed by him. His army of darkness. His singular purpose was a sharp, pulsing black hole in his head. Waves roaring out of it to whip his flock into a frenzy. Filling them with his purpose. The clicker. He wanted it. To make his horrific ending to the story come true. The art was there. The clicker would push it across the final threshold. A detonator to send out a tidal wave that would spread to overtake reality. He was so close to claiming it. The Taken gibbered and shouted, straining against their invisible leashes, filled with bloodlust. Scratch let them go. They launched themselves into the night with violent glee. He ripped a signpost from the ground, swung it in his hands as if it was made of air. Ahead, the music started. It called him on. Let the final deer fence commence. Okay, let's move all the stuff here for the time being. Okay, I think we're good there. I mean, I'm pretty sure we can get rid of one of these trauma pads, but I'd rather hold on to it for the time being. Gameplay is going pretty good, thanks, uh, Pixel Shift. We're just getting through. Actually, find progress in the game rather than just me ranting nonstop. <laughs> this is my boomstick, 100%. Well, like Big Brass, I think the reason why they do that um, is that this is technically supposed to have occurred during those events. So, like, for example, you'll get one that's from Return 8, but you'll find it in a different uh, point in time. I think it's mostly just... Because, like, in narratively speaking, chronologically, this is when it occurs, but we find the page either before or after it occurs. Oh my god. Guys, so this is uh, completely um, out of nowhere, but you guys are talking about, like, the creepy uh, amusement park here. Um, I was called in to collaborate and provide a quote for a, a company that was working on a, a mock-up for a haunted hotel. So this haunted hotel, the whole idea was that they had this proprietary AI that would be able to track where you were inside the room and inside the hotel at all times and what it would do is that if you like walked by a specific light fixture on the wall there was wiring that would immediately trigger to start flickering or something like that or like you look in the mirror and you would see images reflected in it that weren't really there and things like that so the whole and you would like go down this hallway and then like there'd be like a speaker inside the wall that would start talking to you and things like that and it would be able to custom tailor the experience because it was tracking you as you walked around the hotel the entire time and I was brought in to basically help them finish the, um, or at least give them a quote to finish the mock-up set before the investors came, got a chance to look at it. It was a really freaking cool idea. Like, it was just, like, it's just an insane concept, but I'm pretty sure there would be people who would pay to go to, like, amusement parks that, or hotels that are just intended to scare the crap out of you. Hello? Anyone here? Nope. Did they get out? Did the Taken get them? Or were they turned into Taken? I'll need to get the key to the trailer park myself. Ilmo said the key is kept in the gift shop safe. One of your co-workers partners designs escape rooms? Dude, that's cool. I never actually got to do an escape room. I really want to. So me, uh, my, um, 
best friend's wife was uh, going to set up a escape room for us in uh, for our 30th birthday. But of course, uh, the uh, pandemic decided to cancel all that. We already had reservations and then that happened and of course we weren't able to uh, <laughs> do it. But I, so I've still never done it, but uh, it was, seems like a really fun idea. What the fuck? All the toilets are out of order. Get your shit together. <laughs> Probably not the right turn of phrase you want to use when Another talking about an outhouse. Stash. Just saying. Alright. Only striped cups. So, so four is going to be two stripes, I think? Wait. No, three stripes is four. Three, so it's something seven, four. Where is it? Where is a single stripe? There it is. Something seven, four. One seven four and it's backwards, so four seven one. Four seven one. Or maybe it is one seven four. Or maybe it's off slightly. So one seven four, let's say seven four one. No. Four one seven? Oh my gosh. I always mess this one up the first time I do it. So seven is two stripes. Four is three. This is one. Why do I always mess this up? Okay, I'm just going to brute force this. Okay. So I'll just say one, four. There. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. There we go. There's a couple more. Oh, there it is right there. So I did find a glitch here at one point where we just had like, like, you know, the weak spots on the Taken where they had the little glowing red orbs. I found one of those, but it was just literally the Taken didn't spawn, but the orb was still there. So it literally was just like hovering and walking around the area. It was really weird looking. Needs something to jimmy it open with. A list of maintenance work. A screwdriver. Huh. Alright, I'm just gonna ignore that part of it right now and get going. So I actually heard there's a really weird glitch that happened here too. Where all the cars on this kind of fell off the ferris wheel and they were just laying it on the ground around here. And they were trying to like find the code to this because none of the... Uh, chairs were up on it or whatever it's called. Alright, let's go get the screwdriver. Yes, give me all the pistol ammo. Palmo? Ammo. Okay, I'm gonna have to put some of those away pretty soon. With Latte Lagoon, we can't go in there yet. Until the water recedes, but there is a nursery rhyme over in that direction. Jesus! <laughs> Calm down, Saga. It's just a pot of coffee. Who thought this was a good idea and put it around where children are supposed to be? Who thought that was a good idea? Okay, then. Now let's do this. Just... Goodbye. Jesus. Done. Local. 
Really? There we go. And... Goodbye. And I lost my arrow there, too. I want to get my arrow back from that guy. But whatever. Hey, this should get that gift shop open. Beautiful. You want to know what else we could have done with the screwdriver? I mean, let's be real. Anyone who's played Evil Within knows that you get those cr uh, the stealth kills. Why don't we use the screwdriver as a stealth kill option instead of... We don't have a knife, but I'm pretty sure if you put that through a certain orifice, it'll do the same job. Just saying. Okay. So there are some containers over here that I miss. I'll come back here later. Okay, we have a lot of guys over here. Um, I'm going to try to avoid these ones if I can. Not going to happen. Let's see if I can avoid these guys entirely. I mean, technically the ear hole or the eye AMR would be a proper orifice for that kind of attack. What were you guys thinking? Get your... <laughs> I'm concerned about you people sometimes. <laughs> I don't know, Big Breast. I'd honestly have to do a full manuscript breakdown. Now, where is that safe? And see where those uh, land before I can really comment on why some of the, them seem out of order. Sorry, we're at a Bright Falls blend, Anna apologized to the customers. I'll just grab some from the back. More coffee coming right up. She suggested they ride the percolator while they waited. She passed Ilmo at the Espresso Express. Big smile, Anna. Coffee world is all smiles. Anna nodded, smiled. She smiled until her face hurt. Anna stopped walking, realized she was standing next to the Huatari well. Must have zoned out, she thought. She was about to go, but something in the well caught her eye. A shadow shifting in the dark. Anna was overcome by vertigo. The world tilted, and then she was falling down, down, down into the shaft. The darkness opened up to swallow her. So, if Anna went down into the Hotari well, and we know it's one of the places for an overlap, is it entirely possible that Anna ended up in the dark place, in which case... We can use her as a character for something going on there later on. But hey there, uh, no overtime. First time into the stream, well, welcome on in. Happy to have you on our little crazy train here. Locked. Okay. What would Ilmo use for a code? Hey, Ilmo, got another angry voicemail from a parent about her kid poking himself in the eye with one of the souvenir pukos. What grand idea was to sell kids plastic knives in a coffee-themed amusement park? Anyway, oh right, it was yours. I need another moose favor. Mocha was doing just fine. He even got a glowing vet report, and then BAM! They said it was a heart attack. I'm not blaming you. Maybe he just had a bad ticker. No tolerance for stimulants either. We're telling the kids that Mocha's taking a little vacation, but I could really use your help ASAP to maintain continuity. Do you have any more in stock? Thanks. 
I'm sorry, like, I don't think you would need to have a medical degree to realize that giving a moose coffee is probably not a good idea. Just saying. All right, now, other random bit of con information that is a random remedy verse Easter egg. These little plush dolls may or may not have originated from the Crossfire X universe. So in one of the um, uh, scenarios, I think they're out in uh, China, I believe, there is a shop that sells plushies, animal-themed plushies, and this is the exact same model for one of the plushies that's being sold in that game. And if anyone's unfamiliar, Crossfire X technically was written by Remedy. And there's references to Max Payne within it as well, which is freaking weird as hell. But anyways. Theory slash headcanon, yeah. Alright, calm down. This one's easier. Tracker, lookout, cleaner. Okay. Let's go do this. Coffee World staff. Hope they're not all monsters now. The photos have stickers on them. Honestly, Aaron, I, or Aaron, I'm going to say it's just reused assets, to be 100% honest. I do not think they're ever going to be able... They're ever going to revisit what they wrote in Crossfire X, which is a shame, because honestly, the narrative is actually pretty fun. I mean, I'm not really a first-person shooter kind of guy, but it's it was actually a fun narrative at the end of the day, and there's some cool ideas that they... they uh, add in that. If anyone's interested, I actually have a full uh, playthrough of Crossfire X just because it's a Remedy game. A Remedy uh, campaign, I should say. And here's Anna right here. She worked at the concession stand. Hopefully you, uh... We, we figure, find you in the dark place and get you back to safety. But, like, like honestly, am I... The only one thinking that a lot of these random little side plots that never gets explained, like Anna here, like the three investigators, like the guy who has the TV flicking on and off in the middle of the night, the dude in the jail cell who's seeing the eye in the sky out of the darkness that's been watching him, that they're all going to play a role in the Night Springs DLC in some form or another. I don't know, Laura. Um... Give me a second. I can check and see if it's on my other channel. Actually, that's a question I want to bring up to you guys real quick. So, originally, the reason I started a secondary channel just for streams was because I felt that this one was getting bogged down by all of the um, stream uploads, and it was less focused on the actual video essays. But re YouTube kind of changed how they show things and where they separate the streams from the regular videos and uploads and the shorts, which I don't do shorts. I've thought about it, but eh, whatever. Um, but I've been considering just bringing all of my streams back to the primary channel and abandoning the other one. I've considered that, and that's just, I, I thought I wanted to toss around and get everyone's input on. Hold on, let me pull this up on YouTube real quick. Uh, boom. Because, yeah, I have my full control stream over there. I have my... Cro yeah, Crossfire X is over on that one. It's going to be over on the GU streaming uh, channel. Bring it all back to the primary channel. Okay, there we go. Okay. Sorry, we're back. Uh, tracker, lookout, cleaner. Okay. Tracker, lookout. Lookout's probably going to be security. Cleaner is going to be the janitor, which is six. So something for six. Tracker... So it'd be two, four, six. No, okay, let's look at it again. Back up. 
tracker lookout cleaner. So tracker, so maybe four. Why am I like I've I've done this puzzle multiple times and why is my brain going blank right now? Tracker lookout. Maybe four one six. There we go. The keys to my trailer. Now to find the clicker and the cult. I should have a different channel for every video. <laughs> Isn't inconsistent viewer numbers bad for the channel? I mean, it not really, Bep. I mean, the things that really go into channel and the algorithm have to do with uh, in engagement, which is how many comments and likes go, or dislikes. Technically, dislikes positively affect the channel as well. Uh, I'm lucky that I don't really produce content that's controversy to the point where it invites a crap ton of dislikes, thankfully. Um, but also, the quantity of uploads, how many times you upload weekly, is one of the big ones as well. And the other one is, weirdly enough, shorts. YouTube is prioritizing people who do shorts right now because they're trying to compete with stuff like TikTok at the moment. So, uh, channels that primarily work on shorts actually are getting uh, algorithm bumps right now. But I think the channels that do the best are the ones that do all three. They have regular uploads, they have sh live streams, because they're trying to all compete with Twitch as well, and then they do the shorts, which is competing with TikTok. Uh, no, uh, no overtime. Uh, Dor mentioned that Alan brought someone into the story. It's Saga. Saga is Mr. Dor's daughter, and he's not happy that he brought her into the plot. When you ask, Maricetta will speak. Hi there. <laughs> Uh-oh. Where did he go? Where did he go? Isn't it crazy? He just disappeared. Hi there. Oh, jeez. Hi there. I'm gonna get hit. Oh, move. Let's not do that. Fine. I was trying to. I was gonna let you live, but you just apparently don't want to live. Ow. Jesus, not good. Fuck, fine. I'm trying to save batteries really more than anything. I don't like you guys. Alright, so there is going to be... Let's go ahead and grab some of these. Oh, okay, I need to move my leg. My leg! Ow, 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 ow. Um, yeah, let's go grab all these. Maybe we can find some extra ammo. I need some batteries, really. I mean, I feel like I'm good on Alan's side with batteries because I have all those things where I have like a 100% chance to regen, or 75% chance to regen batteries if I kill uh, one of the fade outs. But Saga does not have anything cool like that. There we go. Batteries. Thank you. <laughs> I 
It's not, yeah, Draco, it's not that the game is easier, because technically the game is harder. All the enemies do way more damage. It's just that I'm better at the game this time around. And I'm not really shy about using some of my resources. I mean, like, the only thing I would potentially do shorts for is if there's something small, like a small lore detail in the Remedy verse that I can talk about for 30 seconds. Because let's be real, I don't need to go on a philosophical rant about every topic and every lore piece that's in the game. Just to be 100% frank, I don't have to do that. Um, let's go to the right here. But, I mean, like, little things, for example, like... Oh, that's not good. I mean, the fact that, like, Dr. Ash left a message in the research sector about going down to the Foundation, kind of like trying to tell any future agents to go down there or to, like, leave a east, like, a uh, breadcrumb trail for people going down there. Or the fact that, um... Nick Marsters may have done some other random things. The guy from Quantum Break. Just, like, little things. Another cult box. That really don't need to take ten minutes to talk about. Actually, weirdly enough, let me see. I have a list of some of those little short topics. Let me pull up, because I have a file with all my future, um, projects that I'm working on. I have, like, a couple dozen different things. And let me see, uh, Remedy Shorts, there we go. Short Ideas. I think I already wrote, like, actually scripted some of them, too, but I just never recorded them. Come on. Come on, computer. Um, Dr. Ash Plack, Artemis. Oh, yeah, the Artemis, a character in Quantum Break, who is a, uh, mysterious woman that Paul Serene has been seeing in his dreams. He doesn't know who she is. The fact that Sam was kidnapped by a Mr. Scratch. Um, Hartman's link, possibly, to the Blessed Organization or other paracriminal groups. Um, and just little, like, little things like that. But... I just never really got to doing it. Okay. So this is a really cool little urban legend here. Legends say this is the dwelling place of the evil spirit, the Naki, who lures people to their watery graves. In the early days of waters... Shit. Okay, no, they're not here. In the early days of Watery's histories, this very well was there, uh, was where Ilmo Hitari hid the bodies of his victims with the help of his brothers, Yakop, Yakopi Hitari. It was only after Elmari murdered his own brother that their gruesome acts came to light, but it was the madness of the spirit of Naki possessing Elmari that drove him to murder, like he himself believed. Is there more to this well than meets the eye? So, those names are very specifically really similar to Ilmo and Yako, um, Koskula, for a reason, because they have uh, narrative parallels to them. But we have Anna, who fell down here, was the spirit of the Naki that drove her down to take her to her watery grave. And now we have pink flamingos everywhere. I need to open the safe. Oh, I never actually <laughs> looked at this. <laughs> People hate the puzzles, Zuma. Why not just use keys? People love the puzzles, Yako. Only very smart people can think up good puzzles. Just look around and you will find the answer. Dedicated staff will be rewarded. The combination to the safe is somewhere in the gift shop. You know what? That's actually a good observation, Big Brass, because I, I forgot to... Um, mentioned this before we went into this whole area, but this entire narrative we're going through is going to overlap with um, the theater. So this area overlaps with the theater. 
And the reasoning why is because we have the uh, the two Hotari brothers throwing bodies down into the well when we had Thornton and Bulligan, the NYPD detective versions of them throwing bodies into the uh, little garbage chute outside of the, the back into the theater. So that's where a lot of this narrative overlaps as well. But your idea that Naki being similar to Cynthia, because she kind of lures Thor or Tor down into the puddle, into the dark, into the overlap, is actually interesting. All right, let's go ahead and get onwards. I think it is time to go see some family. Another Alex Casey lunchbox? You can do anything you put your mind to, hero, so long as what you put your mind to is part of the story. Luckily, that's not true for Saga's case. The note inside mentions the story. Is this person aware of the horror story, too? Yep. I already took care of all this. Figured all this out already. So this goes here, and that goes there. Beautiful. Look over there. There we go. Uh, watery. Inside refer. Uh, inside reference cult members M N T Mul Mulligan and Thornton. Yep. More warnings inside. People must break it into these fairly consistently. That's actually kind of true. Weirdly enough. Hold the fire button to activate auto fire. I actually don't want auto fire. To be honest. Increases magazine size. I mean, technically... I don't think I'm going to need that, to be 100% honest. I mean, the magnetic pull... You know what? Let's do that, because I'm having a lot Saga of situations... Saga hit the take in with the crossbow. She switched to her gun and kept firing at it. The bullets hit home, following a strange trajectory, as if the bolt had carved a track in the air for them. A magnetic pull for them to follow. Is because I keep having these where I uh, get the arrow in the head, but then it doesn't kill them, so I pull out my pistol. It, this will just make it easier, because then I basically have an aim bot at this point. Yeah, these are all knittings. So, all this stuff right here, these are not real rocks. These are uh, just knitted. As far as I can tell. Basically, um, Mandy May has... Rose asked Mandy May to start knitting all of this stuff for her, and she was using it to mark all the spots where the lunch boxes are. Lunch boxes. Lunch boxes. We haven't found a new uh, New Game Plus manuscript recently. We'll talk. We'll see more when we get to Valhalla. I could be mistaken, where we do have painted rocks and the knitted stuff. It's possible. I don't know. Oh, there! My neck just snapped in half. That felt lovely. Oh, wait, hold on. I wonder if I'm going to get some of my glitches that I got. I found some game-breaking glitches in um, my second playthrough that was freaking awesome. And not in a bad way. I mean, like, infinite freaking flare gun ammo and infinite rifle ammo and stuff like that. Another locked box. Okay, so we're going to have to do these based upon the shapes. So a circle it has one... It's technically one exterior, so that's going to be double down. Three is going to be double down, and that's going to be two. So it's up. Okay. So one's double down, three is that, and that one is... Okay. I think I got it. 
Dumb, double up, and then two down. Yep, that's it. Do we know where all the New Game Plus lore documents are? Not right now, Queenie, but luckily we have the Setter Charm on, so we're going to find basically any of the manuscript pages that we come across, that are in the game. We're not going to miss any because we have the Setter Charm. The note inside offers incentives for getting the Anderson brothers on board. Because, yeah... Getting the Anderson Brothers on board would be a big win for us, so I'm offering a $100 Superstore gift card plus a year's worth of fresh coffee at the Odeer Diner for whoever gets those two to join. I mean, like, that seems a little bit reckless, to be honest. Like, I know the Anderson Brothers are kind of a legend when it comes to this situation, but at their age, do you really want them trouncing around in the woods? I mean, you're gonna, like, give them a heart attack before they're gonna be the most useful, literally just beating up Taken as they come out of the lake. Go away. I'm gonna be using a lot of ammo here. Too fast to see! Shoot. Beautiful. Like, if these guys got together, I'd use the flares because it's cheaper than the batteries, but whatever. Shoot. Technically, yes, you do have double hammer power. If we wanted to. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, with that Flarouge, is, I mean, they were... All they were doing is doing a rock performance. It's not like they were being told to hunt around with deer masks on and grab people, strap them down, and then cut their hearts out. That's a completely different activity than just putting on a rock concert. Oh, wait, hold on. I need to get all of these. So we have the mother doll, archetypal, the wise old doll, elder doll, archetypal, and the trickster doll, doll also archetypal. These are all just pure archetypes here. It's nice details, but it gives me the creeps. Anyone else love that the wise elder doll has a hammer in his hand? I wonder who this one's supposed to represent. What is that, a sledgehammer? Do wise old men usually carry those? How <laughs> certain wise old men do. <laughs> Holding the belly, a bit on the nose for my taste. I mean, that's the point of the mother arc. That's what that archetype is. I mean, if you look at the Empress, too, it's the thing that births new forms and transitions of reality. I mean, that's why a lot of cultures look at the Earth as feminine, because you plant a seed in it, and it grows out of it, and then you have the bounce. Alright, guys. Uh, so, OBS just dropped for a second. I want to make sure that everyone is back with me. Before I continue. OBS is literally just disconnected for a second, but it should be back up now. We're good? Okay, perfect. Yeah, sometimes it'll go down for a fraction of a second and reconnect. Uh, like, if it takes longer than that, the whole thing will just... It'll just cancel the entire stream. Beautiful. Okay. Oh. Another rhyme. Could be reference to Chernobog. I mean, it's definitely going to be about Tor, personally. So, an old watcher of the sea, before his demise, cursed the water that ruined his eyes. And remember, we're going to be talking about Tor. 
Anderson here. I mean, we can also technically just put the old, the uh, wise elder as both Odin and Tor. The hammer being referenced to Tor and the ruining his eyes, or the waters that ruined his eyes, because literally the lake, an entity from the lake took his eye, so it's kind of literal. So he played a trick on the ocean deep, the waves to fight and havoc to wreak. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't even read the whole thing. Shoot. My bad. And technically speaking, th I think this one really has to do with the battle that happened in 1988, where the Andersons kind of cast Mr. Door into the lake. What pan What other pantheons do we think exist in the Remedyverse? I mean, like, I don't... So far, the only mythologies we've really had stuff come out of is a lot of Nordic, there's a little bit of Finnish uh, folklore, but there's also some Gnosticism, weirdly enough, in this game that they directly reference. But frankly, I would argue every mythology exists within this. I mean, the game is very self-referential when it comes to media, so I would presume that literally, if, like, anything that's in our world is going to be in this world. So it's just kind of whatever. Dylan is a Welsh god of water, you think? Really, Ghost Temple? Like, I'm not familiar with that. What's the, um, is it an etymological thing? More of those kids' lunchboxes. But then, almost at the same time, but not quite, another hand grabbed my other wrist. It was my childhood's friend's estranged twin brother, a rugged ex-soldier who'd helped me fight back the zombie horde. With his chiseled jaw and smoldering eyes and worn leather jacket, my heart fluttered like a small bird against its cage. So Rose uses a, a lot of uh, bird uh, symbolism when, when she's referring to herself, which is interesting. Ignore him, babe. You know I'm who you want. The sensitive friend I had cared for all my life, or the intense warrior I had known for one harrowing day. How was I ever going to choose? The zombies were easier than this. <laughs> She's turning her... It's a zombie romance novel. No, not... I mean, like, I would argue it's... More Scratch? I mean, you could argue that the other one is Zane. That's definitely an interpretation. A rhyme about an old man who became a monster. Anger's remorse. That's exactly what Thor thinks about himself. More fan fiction and a boy. And boy, what a cliffhanger. <laughs> I mean, let's be perfectly honest. If Remedy made a zombie romance game starring Rose, everyone would buy that shit. <laughs> I would be so down. <laughs> All right. So a little detail here that's interesting about this specific nursery rhyme is the footprints are going... Let's look at the direction of the footprints. They're coming up to the lighthouse. They're not going to the lake, they're coming from the lake. I mean, it could be just a standard zombie game AMR. It doesn't have to be anything specific. <laughs> Yes, 100% Prince. The fanfic is about Rose and Alan. 100%. I mean, the sensitive writer I've known since my youth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
this is a hundred percent about Rosen Allen. All right, and this is another one of those mugs. Jeez, I have a lot of these. So I have like four Phoenix Downs right now. You have another theory that he's Mimir. So the only reason I would not say Dylan would be related to Mimir. Oh, Ati being a god of water. Sorry, I thought you were talking about Dylan still. Um, well, I like the theory of Ati being the god of water. I hear another theory that he is Mimir. I'm going to say, no, Ati is definitely Ati of Finnish folklore. He's definitely named after himself. Who's a god of fishermen and the depths and sailors and things of that nature. Because what he does is he kind of guides the sailors on this ocean. That's his role. Now, if we're going to have something similar to Mimir, it's going to be the entity that took Odin's eye. Because that's what, like, in the, in the mythology... Odin went down to the Mimisburner, the Well of Wisdom, the Well of Ord, and sacrifices I to Mimir for the right to drink from the Well of Wisdom. So whoever took Odin's eye would be the Mimir in this narrative. Yeah, some like I, I, yeah, I've heard that too, Ayla. Is that some look at uh, Mr. Door as either Heimdall or Mimir in this scenario, and I can see it both ways, to be honest. But again, like we're talking about narrative similarities versus Odin and Thor and Ati, who are very specifically supposed to be representations of those deities. No, Jinx, Mimir wasn't always headless. That's just God of War. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't think in the actual mythology Mimir lost his head. I could be wrong. I, I don't know a lot about uh, Norse mythologies, but as far as I can tell, that's literally only... The page said I'd run into a cultist here. On your toes, Saga. I think it's only God of War, though.
That's not. <laughs> I hear he just kills cats. That is slander to the mayor setter's moral virtue is beyond reproach, and I resent the fact that Figamore here is trying to slander him. Gosh. And uh, just to clarify for anyone who's not reading chat, um, I do stand uh, corrected. Apparently, in the Norse mythology, he did, in fact, lose his head just under different circumstances, so I'm... I will admit that I am was ignorant on that note, but I am no longer ignorant on it now. My first watery visit. I'm staying near the lighthouse trailer park, a nice little spot just off the road. It's very quiet here during the day. At night, not so much. I've never been too nervous and can sleep through an earthquake, but here, I don't know, something just feels off. The animals act weird. They're restless at night, making weird noises and running away. And I s could swear I heard someone moving around, circling. I'm going to give it one more night and then move on. Okay, I'm just making sure there's nothing here from the setter charm. Okay, so we're going to the trailer park. Well, that's why, Queenie, I'm so interested in what the last two ones are. And I, I'm not going to bring it up right now because I could be incorrect in this assessment. But I, there's something about these radio broadcasts that I kind of want to comment on. But until we get to... Marisetter is not afraid of the rough questions. But until we get to Valhalla, I don't want to say anything. I want to look at something in Valhalla first. And then I'll comment on it. Well, we're going to look at some of the other trailer park residents right now. You guys ready? Best boys. Best characters in the entire franchise. Gotta love these guys. Must not drink the water. Or take a bath. Ever again. Moonshine. Only drink the moonshine, brother. <laughs> Don't look like cultists. It's already Cynthia already has his her wiles over him right now. Excuse me. I'm looking for the Anderson trailer. Sweetie pie, right on time. They knew she was coming. That's why they're here. True. Lies to hurt you and make you weak. Don't believe a word. They believe because deep down, they want to be told what to think. <laughs> We're different. Rebels! <laughs> you must stop it before it turns real. Don't be part of the story. Make the story. <laughs> stop the hell of it! <laughs> These old drunks don't seem affected by the horror story like the other locals are. Do they know what's happening here? 
How do you know about the story? Same as you, of course, sweetie pie. We are family. The Andersons. Vikings. Gods. So good to finally see you, Saga. I am your great uncle Odin, and this is your long lost Mordefar, Thor. All the thoughts going through his head right now. He is your grandfather, and I am the old father. <laughs> Just as crazy as everyone else. <laughs> Just as caught in it. I need to stay focused. Yeah. I need to check out the trailer. That little bit with uh, Thor having the overlay on him, do, that was in the original pie. game. We don't want to keep you from your business. You can come see us anytime at our resting place, Valhalla Nursing Home. I think uh, Kata is something like my dear or sweet or something along those lines. I think it's Swedish, but I'm not 100% positive. Well, Nanix, that's the rub. That's why I want to go to Valhalla. He's asking, um, has anyone seen Tapio in-game or is he just on the radio? You're, you're, my, our minds are in the same place right now, but I'm not going to comment more until we get to Valhalla. Looks like you two have had a bit too much fun. She sees right through us, bro. She has the power. This calls for a fucking celebration. Our little saga all grown up and finally home. Sure, we've had a few sips. Just a taste. The famous Anderson moonshine. Oh, the nectar of the gods. You want some? No, thanks. Actually, it probably would help. Your name is Anderson? Same as you, kiddo. Tor Anderson? Odin Anderson? The old gods of Asgard. That's our band. You're... You're Saga Anderson, goddammit. A Viking goddess. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Tor? Odin, Saga, all Norse-inspired, plus the same last name. A coincidence? Did the horror story change their names to match mine? Have you seen any strange people in deer masks? I haven't drunk enough for that yet. You can see all sorts of wonderful things when you make your way down the bottle. Even more so with just one eye. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, well, Bry Guy, T Guy, um, when I did my second playthrough privately, when I was taking all my notes um, for future projects and uh, video essays, I did note that they had that little overlay there. Maybe it was in a patch before they patched it in after the first time I played it. I don't know. So, do you know where the Anderson trailer is? Right behind us. We've been looking after it since you left. Uh-huh. Thanks for your help. Anytime, kiddo. Okay. Zoe, Zoe, Zoe. One second, guys. I need to go... The cat's begging to come in. I need to go refill my water. I'll be right back after I take care of her. Do you think we missed our show? One second. Okay.
And we're back. That depressing tango shit is bad for your head, bro. Too much truth in it. <laughs> Drags me down. Too much yes, truth. Tango is uplifting. Music for the soul. I'm with you, Odin. The Sank got in Tango. I'm with you 100% there, buddy. And another lunchbox. You can overcome adversity and achieve your goals. Thank you, Rose. You are so Dude, we all need someone like Rose just to hype us up at all times. Let's be real. These are some positive affirmations inside. Cute. Connection to Odin and Tor. Mom never talked about the family. I've had moonshine before. Uh, my buddy had some blueberry moonshine. It was really tasty. <laughs> like, really tasty. Oh my god, cat! I literally just... <laughs> what? Oh my lord, kitty. Zoe, where are you at? Do you want to come up? Do you want to lay down? Hey there. Come on, you can come up. Come on, hop up. Hop up, sweetheart. You don't want to hop up. Okay, that's fine. Is he gonna come up? Nope, okay. All right. It depends on what kind of mead you get. I've had really good mead in the past. Oh, fucking hell. What time is it? Gotta head back to the bus soon, brother. The Rusky is itching to leave us behind every chance he gets. Ah, we got time. Blum wants to stay on our good side. <laughs> yeah, because Blum's trying to get them into the cult of the tree. That's why. Oh, and she just finally came up. I can lay down, or you're just gonna shove that tail right in my face. <laughs> Hello, Yako. Who is this incredibly attractive martial arts master? It's me, your brother, Ilmo. I now recognize you, but Ilmo, why are you dressed like that? Deerfest is almost here, which means we're <laughs> chopping the prices on all of our custom-designed Deerfest parade floats. Floats created by the award-winning team at Kalevala Knights Motorcycle Club, winners of last year's trophy for Best deer fest float featuring an animal that is not deer. That very team. And you're gonna get a kick <laughs> out of our latest float designs. <laughs> We've done it all. Deer fest floats, restaurant floats, floats shaped like things we can't show on television. <laughs> our floats are the best way to impress your friends. Propose to your partner or throw shade at an office colleague. And we don't do just deer fest. Our floats are a perfect gift for weddings, birthdays, and bar mitzvahs, or your Kinsinera. Kin kin Our folks kin will watch up any special occasion. <laughs> uh, well, I take our word for it. Let's hear it from one of our many, many happy customers. Tapio. I was at Deer Fest last year. Flows were pretty good. One of them was a swan. And I was stoked people liked it. And there you have it. Award-winning boats now at reduced prices that will knock you off your feet. Are yours today? Well, okay then. That's a good deer. Okay, so there's not really much in this trailer. I mean, we got some that, we got some mac and cheese. There is, weirdly enough, some rope 
just sitting under the chair, which that's concerning. It's not the same. I don't know why, why do you have rope in your living room? Ten signals and Morse code, the snake in the grass. <laughs> I'm not going to read those comments out loud because I'm trying to keep everything PG, but... Yep. Alright. So we do have a container back there. This is all the Anderson stuff. And we'll have to come back here after the overlap to get all that stuff. You're fighting that swan tonight. There we go. Looks like someone's kind of a... Uh, Enjoys fitness quite a bit in here. All right, so random thing that I just came across while I was listening to him is the name Tapio. So Tapio is an East Finnish forest spirit or god who figure uh, who featured prominently in the Kolavela. Hunters prayed to him before a hunt. His wife is the goddess of the forest, uh, Meliki. Tapio is a male uh, is a male given name common in Finland. So, yeah. Tapio is the god of forced animals and hunting. And he's in the Calavella. Along with, I believe, Ati is in the Calavella as well. Didn't know that. I know it now. Let's move on. 
Dear Mom, as I promised, I'm writing to you now that we've settled in. We're doing great, as busy as ever. The big, uh, as ever, the big city. Jim's working hard and landed a promotion. We're going to celebrate by going to a hot new restaurant that Connie recommended. Laura's doing well in school. She'll have her pick of any college with the grades she's been getting. So proud of my little girl. I've been making, uh, I've been busy making our apartment into a home, training staff, plus shopping for furniture. Who knew finding a decent chaise lounge would be so hard? All going well. Don't worry about us. Hope all is well with you too. Love, Megan. So we will get a follow up on this Megan shortly. Was Wendy the name of the girl in the car garage in Alan Wake's American Nightmare? No. No, 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 no. Wendy was um, one of the original victims, Amelia. That's Emma. You're thinking of Emma Sloan. Um, murders at Calder. Previous murders. So, yeah, Wendy Davis is going to be one of the previous uh, murders right here. Uh, found in Cauldron Lake in 2018. Some organs missing from predation, uh, which, which means animals were chewing on it. State of the body does not match eight years spent in the lake. No, we've never seen Wendy before. That being said, though... Give me a second. Oh my gosh, Cat, what? What are you trying to do? She's literally just... Ugh. That being said, there is some information about the uh, Davis family. Give me a second. Let me pull this all up. Um, do I have it here? I do not. Shoot. Do I have it? No, I do have it here. Okay, right. Manage. Browse local files. Uh, the Alan Wake files. There we go. Perfect. So there is actually, weirdly enough, a reference to the Davis family in the Alan Wake files. But let me go pull it up real quick. Okay, so let's switch over the camera real quick. Uh, there we go. So right here we have a domestic disturbance. Let's zoom in real quick. Report. And it's actually kind of hard to read right here because I have my the arm for my microphone here. Domestic disturbance for Andrew and Sarah Davis. So, distress call originated with Mrs. Janet Shore of 28 Redwood Pine, neighbor of Andrew and Sarah Davis. Ms. Shore reported shouting and smashing sounds, including breaking glass. Officers responded to the distress call logged at 1.33 a.m. from Mrs. Shore. Officers forced their way into the residence at 34 Redwood Place after repeating attempts to speak to the occupants were met with silence. The house turned out to be unoccupied. But with the major physical damage to the interior, Deputy Mulligan interviewed the caller, Mrs. Shore, who insisted there had been no history of domestic violence at the Davis residence. Nice young couple. They hadn't informed any neighbors of the travel plans, and after midnight is an unusual time to run errands. So the Davises are now considered missing persons, with a likelihood of foul play. Physical evidence is puzzling. There was significant damage inside the home, but it seemed to emanate from certain points of the room. The furniture in the main room was smashed against the perimeter as though there was a centrifugal force in the center, spinning everything outward, kind of like a tornado. The lab was investigating a black soot-like substance found in small traces at the scene. No evidence of incendiary uh, devices or other suggestions or attempted arson. The power outage of the house was another anomaly. No other houses in the neighborhood were affected. Missing persons profiled. Married couple, both white, early 30s, both medium bills. Wife wears a lot of black, according to the witness. Not sure of a significant remark. Uh, the husband worked in insurance. The wife had an internet-based home business, according to the neighbors. Not known enemies. No known enemies, no dangerous habits. Both read a lot of mystery fiction, stayed at home, and led quiet lives. Um, there's not really a side quest for that, Amelia. That's just a random piece of information back in uh, 2010 when the first... This was, like, released alongside the first game. Alright, let's get going. So most likely, those two just became taken. So the, the uh, tornado came in, they were taken, and boom, that's it. 
just two random victims. But it's interesting that it's also of the Davis family. I mean, Amelia, you can get it. Um, I only have it on PDF because I have the Steam version of Alan Wake. You, it comes along free with the Steam version of the game. We're staying semi-fit. We got some balls of yarn, which is interesting. Something about the water. Sounds about right. Did I leave the Bureau in this fictional reality? Agent Anderson, our deepest condolences for your loss. The Bureau knows it's an incredibly hard time for you. I personally can assure that you are committed to your well-being and will allow the time needed for your recovery from this tragedy. The FBI is here for you. We will be ready to welcome you back to work as soon as you're ready. We uh, we could really use that insightful mind of yours, so we can hope we hope to see you back in our ranks soon. Warm regards, Stacy Marrow. Now, interesting thing, little thing we want to point a um, make note of is the reason why Rose was doing a bunch of knitted stuff. Had Mandy May do the knitted stuff to mark off the lunch boxes is because Saga apparently took up knitting as we see here, and had an affinity towards it in this fictional reality. Which, she's like, oh, well, you like knitting? Okay, well, let's do some knitting. A pun book from Elmo. Are we close in the story? That might explain some of his behavior. I, uh, Aiden, I don't know if it comes with the remastered version. I have it uh, alongside the base game in Steam. I don't think it comes with the remastered version, though. Addressed to me from years ago. Wake was right. The horror story is changing reality, not just people's memories. Okay, so a thing to note that this was back in 2018 is when this bill was timed, so we can kind of get a timeline. And that looks disgusting, Pizza just said. card saying. has mom's handwriting. A little bird told me what's it, that it's your birthday, so be sure to give yourself something a special tweetment. Love you, Logan, Grandma Freya. Good morning, Pregesh. How you doing? Hope your day is going well. Everything here reminds me of Logan. This could be her room. This is getting too real. We're talking, personal. we're talking about the Alan Wake files. The Nordic Tales book Mom gave to Logan when she was little. Logan's junior agent certificate. So cute. Okay, so I do have... Um, 815... 2018... So 8 15 2018 and Dawn. this is also in 2018. Logan used to love her music. All right, I think I found a discrepancy in some of the timelines here, but we're going to take a look at this real quick. So this says that Log uh, Logan loves Bud. I took her to a concert in DC for her 12th birth for her 12th birthday. This isn't fake. Okay, so she was 12 and supposedly at the time of 2018, which means she would have been born in 2016? No, 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 2006. But, <sighs> this is also a little thing here. Take your daughter to work day. Logan was maybe eight when this happened. And this was signed in 2018, which means she would have been born in 2010. She would, so instead of like it's saying in one version it's saying she's 12 and in another version she's saying she's 8 at the exact same time now that being said this poster could be from a different tour which would make 
the only way I can reconcile this. But this is probably the closest timeline we get of Logan's birth, which would be 2010, which again is the year Alan went missing. Logan is currently 14. So 2011-ish, depending on when her birth month is. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just headcanon that this is from a tour that she didn't go to, but she had the poster for. <clears throat> Let's just headcanon that for now. No. Yeah, no, I got that, Aiden. It's just, I'm trying to create a timeline here, and... She's like, maybe... Like, I wouldn't expect her to be off several years. She might be off a few months, maybe a year. Who knows? I certainly know that. <laughs> At this point in the game, I don't recall what year certain things happen in my life. My memory like that is terrible. Okay. Keep on shining, little rock star. Your proud great granddad and great grand uncle. Yeah. Night Springs, new season coming. Oh, so there's mom driving away with the FBI car. There's David, Logan, and they have a puppy, apparently. Interesting. My new found relatives. Cozy with the cult of the tree. And that's the clicker, in the hands of the cult, just like the page promised. Carly Valla Knights. That's the motorcycle club the Coskella brothers are in. I'll take Odin and Tor up on their offer and visit their nursing home, right after I find this biker workshop. is a cultist? What the fuck is going on here? And then we have Uncle Odin and Uncle, Great Uncle Tor. Logan at Coffee World. And for some weird reason, David and Logan are playing Control, fighting the former. Okay, moving onwards.
Alright, let's actually do this. So those jump scares don't work as well when you're uh, in the pause menu. <laughs> Alright. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and... Nah, let's just leave it at that. Well, it's not just that the former's there, but it's also that they have the health bar from the game control in the bottom left corner. So it legitimately is controls a video game, but that's not the only time I've done that. I mean, Quantum Break had Alan Wake video game in it, too. Max Payne realizes he's in the video game, which is why I find it so interesting that Thomas Emerson is referenced in this game. The headline about Logan wasn't real. Don't think about it. The cult has the clicker. Since he's Get a video it? game designer. Fix this. Who was at the Cauldron Lake Lodge near, near Cauldron Lake. I was kind of expecting this TV to turn on now. Poor thing. I mean, Ghost Tempo, like, you kind of do that sometimes. Like, with my nephew, I'll be playing a single-player game, and I'll give him a controller so he thinks he's playing, too. It's not really... Doesn't mean he's actually... It's a two-player game. Yes. Dude, the ambiance, sound design, and uh, music design is freaking great in this. There's another lunchbox. It must be so exciting to be the story's hero. Honestly, I'm a bit jealous. I wish I could be the protagonist of something. Rose, you are the protagonist in our hearts. Let's be real. Well, the thing here, Clotness, is like the multiverse, when it applies to the Remedyverse, isn't characterized in the same way that everyone else does, that other pieces of fiction do. Where it's like, oh, it's the exact same people. No, 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 no. It's, it, it's very unique in how it does it. Alright, so I was told that there was a new uh, piece of evidence in Saga's trailer, so I'm going to run back there real quick.
I mean, as of right now, it's less that there are multiple universes, but there are, like, various pocket universes and overlaps, and it's just... It's all technically the same reality, it's just different tiers of the same reality. Okay. Are you sure there's something new in the bathroom? Yeah, I don't see anything new here in the bathroom. Never mind. Okay, let's head back to the shop. Well, because the lady that... Uh, the girl that drowned happened in the basement of where the Valhalla building is located at now. There's a bunker in the area. And then... We have Barbara drowning, then we have Alice drowning, then we have Cynthia drowning, then we have Logan drowning. <laughs> and the thing is, it's very intentionally done that they have narrative and thematic echoes all throughout their work. Hey there, Mr. Uh, Super Tweedo. I'm glad you managed to find it. How'd you enjoy uh, Animal Lake 2? Glad you enjoy all the content we have over here, dude. Stashes? Stash the stashes. Hello, I've seen some of you place our stashes in the open. Please don't do that, you rascals. This is your final warning to stop taking the OOP out of the assembly hall. You want to get drunk in the workshop? Fine, but the OOP is for ritual use only. You idiots are worse than my kids. Alright, and we know, like... In retrospect, it's very obvious why Yako's using the term object of power here when they stole FBC documents, and that's where they got the term from, so fair enough. Hi, Uncle Ilmo. By the way, Charlie Koskela, that's, this is going to be Yako's kid. Charlene and I still haven't received our paychecks for last month's Coffee World promo work. Are you sure you sent them? Could you double check? Maybe they slipped through the cracks. Also, Charlene wanted me to tell you that her suit still smells weird. Charlie. The deer, the deer fest floats are eating up our space. Try to keep things neat and tidy around the workshop, okay? I can't find my tools. I can't even find my left hand, even though it's attached to me. But I still... But I will find my boot up someone's ass if you all keep making a mess. Now, the sad thing is, um, with Yako's death, that means Charlene and Charlie here, um, they just lost their dad by the end of the game. Hey there, Cameron Griffin. Welcome on in. Glad you can make it live, too. Hello, fellas. I suggest we start a regular sauna night now that the old place is working again. What's the best time? How about a classic Saturday night session? I'll bring the sausage and mustard, but bring your own beer. Not everyone enjoys frying themselves to death, Elmo. And who wants to pick mustard over ketchup? Okay. All right. We got to do this. All right, we're having a poll. Mustard or ketchup on hot dogs? Go. Ilmo, ignore Fred. He doesn't have what it takes. And he's wrong about ketchup, too. It's obviously chili mayo or nothing. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for your valuable input. I'm assuming that means Saturday Night Sauna is on. Sauna is good for the body and good for the soul. You may not like it, but it likes you. And all condiments are welcome, of course. Hey, Ilmo, I can't find the new lock combination. Look inside the smiley coffee cup. It doesn't help me. Chili mustard, or chili mayo. It's a spicy mayo. I mean, I could be... I could argue that. So far, it seems kind of 50-50 at the moment. Alright, so we got arsenic, bottom right, and the up-down play buttons. Okay. Okay. 
And I don't really Locked. have an order for it. They must be in there. Let's there start has with to that. be a way to get this lock open. Where's arsenic? Oh, I got it right the first time. Nice. This is the cult hideout. Their headquarters, even? Okay, we're good right now. We're almost already maxed out in here, There's too. There's a basement. A fuse. I'll take Could the fuse. Could come in handy. So it looks like mustard one fifty two percent to forty seven percent ketchup. You know what? That sounds about right. <laughs> All right, is time for some lore bits. The light switch you found washed up at the lake is not junk. It's a f it's fucking important. Trust me on this. From now on, wherever whenever we catch a target, we're also gonna cut out its heart, stick a thing in its side, and flick. I know it sounds weird, but trust me, it'll be like a ritual. This is gonna work. The cult is leaving supplies around for themselves. Faith in humanity restored. <laughs> like, honestly, when I do hot dogs, usually what I end up doing is, like, do some um, caramelized onions. I sometimes wrap it with some smoked pastrami. And then some uh, cheddar melted on the top of it and other things along those lines. But, yeah, it's good. This will be handy. That's it. I've marked the maps like you asked. That's all the stashes, but our last count locked and loaded and ready to go. This is the cult's process. Their ritual. Ritual for taken. Surround the target, subdue them, use hammer or, or other blunt object, restrain them, carve out their hearts, recite the words, put the clicker into their chest. Flick the switch twice to make sure it works. Remember, floodlights on tripods. We need to see what we're doing. Always work in pairs. The cult isn't well organized. People aren't following orders. Whoever has been sabotaging the lake house equipment, stop it. If you're looking for ways to help the cult, this is not it. Unless you're bringing feds down on us to what you consider helpful, in which case you can fuck right off. Stay away from the FBC, and if you get see them poking around again, report it to the Grand Master. The Nightingale ritual wasn't completed. I'm not trying to play a blame game here, but we cannot let random tourists rock right into one of our rituals. We were stopped before we could use the clicker. Hell, the lights weren't even set up yet. This is unacceptable. So let's look at the learnings. We need to be faster with our steps. We need to be 100% positive someone is on lookout duty. Communication, communication, communication. Slip-ups slip -ups like this are why we have FBI agents snooping around, which is not great. I'm only being harsh about this because I know we can do better. So the question is here is, are we still looking at Ilmo as the Grand Master here, or is there a different Grand Master? Because the Grand Master in the overlap in part of Alan's story uh, for the Poets Theater is a huge thing that seems to be aware of the reality and the nature of the film it's in. Sauerkraut's good too. Sauerkraut's good, but only if you have if you're using actual sausages and not uh, hot dogs. Okay. This is one weird cult. We watch in the night. I see it now. This is our miss mission: make the woods scary again. It's a tree. A spruce tree. Keep them out. Make them safe. Together we are the force, the cult of the tree. And so this is where we have the Bureau's symbol. And then because he was drunk and loaded at the time, he was seeing double and boom, spruce tree. Rose. She's that waitress from the diner. We're going to talk about that more, Millie, when we get to that part of Alan's story. So this is just the FPC tracking Rose. But a lot of it has to do with her, like, looking at the clouds, becoming upset because she's getting messages from Alan in the clouds. She's seeing his image in the puddles and stuff like that. Intermittent surveillance of the paracriminal group known as Cult of the Tree shows that their operation is limited to a small area of the Washington state. The group is reported to be made up of a dedicated individuals equipped with only common tools. Overall level of organization is low. Overall comprehension of redacted is low. Our assessment yielded a category orange status risk. Risk status. Further inquiries should be made as to the exact details and sources of their knowledge regarding paranatural elements. 
The investigation unit recommends the cult of the tree be kept under permanent surveillance with the appropriations made for the group's arrest and seizure of assets. Full report and recommendation summary uh, forwarded to Dr. Marmot at the Cauldron Lake Research Center. Addendum. Recommended action downgraded to continued intermittent surveillance. No, ar no arrest due to prioritization of resources. And then they acknowledge that, yeah, they were watching us. Okay. No. Logan's not dead. So there's still one piece of evidence I have not found regarding Logan, and I never found it, weirdly enough. I don't know where this is located at. The photo proved the cult had the clicker. Tor and Odin were in it, too. Worth following up on later. Now we've got all the who's involved sections here. There we go. Seriously, this would be almost be funny if it, what, they weren't killing people. Think Saga. Oh god, I'm bad at this. Seems our cultists aren't totally aligned here. Doesn't sound like true believer types. Doesn't look right. Are right, you saying the uh, the uh, donut is about the loops? I mean, <laughs> if we say so. This is what the series does to us, is it makes us see patterns like that, but it's probably not meaningful. <laughs> okay, you guys said something about a stapler. I'm actually curious. Where's the stapler? Oh, because it has that little wood on the top? Yeah, I agree, that's a little weird. Alright, let's head on down. A creepy basement. Nathan, I would say probably 95% of the game is still the same, but there are noticeable differences, and really the ending is what I'm Shit. trying to get to. Hey! Freeze! And this is the point of the story That's where... The Alan takes the clicker from here, or someone else does. No, I don't think it's Alan. No. Thornton and Mulligan it's take Logan's. it. Yeah, never mind. They're playing with I me. I take that back. I was so close. There was another overlap here in Watery. The parade float was the key. Mulligan and Thornton had gone there, taken the clicker. Left this monster here to stop her. There's an overlap here. Like there was at Cauldron Lake. Mulligan and Thornton are like Nightingale. Inside. Waiting. And a parade float is the key. Saga had read about it. The trap. She knew what was waiting for her. The moment she saw the giant, she knew she wasn't ready. You let Logan drown. The weapon it carried could crack her skull like a brittle egg. Brains leaking out like yolk. Everything she loved, lost. Everything she was, lost. We will watch it eat your mind. Reading this made her sick. But the fear was sharp when she faced it. There was another overlap here in Watery. The parade float was the key. Mulligan and Thornton had gone there. Taken the clicker with them. Left this monster here to stop her. Ooh. 
Mulligan and Thornton were fine earlier. How did this happen? A terrible mistake. Shadows crept over Mulligan and Thornton. Shadows on their faces, filling the shape of them. Bright Falls fucking finest. Shitty pastrami sandwich. Mulligan and Thornton became like Nightingale. Mulligan and Thornton are members of the cult. Who's the leader? Brains leaking out like ilk. The thrill of domination. Not one tree. The forest. The word. A secret like this one doesn't die. There is more than one leader. Mm -hmm. yeah, technically, at this point, you should have all the information you need to know who the cult leader is with the Cosgrove brothers, but Saga has not caught on yet. The clicker was there the whole time. Fucking Mulligan and Thornton. They took the clicker into the overlap. How do I get it back? A Taken is upstairs. This was a trap. Okay. So let's go ahead and we got a big boy we gotta deal with right here. It's gonna pop out right there on the right. Float. No! Mr. Trippy, what are you doing? There we go. Okay, perfect. He was about to stop me from getting my arrows back. Now we're just gonna use this because we're gonna save some batteries. Beautiful. Is this the parade float the page mentioned? The overlap formed around Watery's dark past. The ritual to enter was tied to crafting the float. Art was the key. It had the power to let Saga in. That cauldron light giving the poem in the heart to the witch sign opened the overlap. That's the ritual. Here, it's the parade float. This is the new ritual. But it's incomplete. This is one disturbing parade float. I don't hear any haunting laughter. Not sure what Puko means, but it looks like... How come one of them is wearing a mask and the other isn't? Hmm. And we'll see that one uh, more when we get Stabbing to the um, again and Poets again. Theater overlap. That must mean the arm's supposed to move. So this is the second ritual we're going to be going through. So this is the Coscula Brothers Parade Float. Looks like only four pieces are missing. And this one the mask is the only one without saga? a location listed. Saga. Hmm. Um, this one's very Good similar shot. to the American Easy. Nightmare rituals. I can't make out what it says. Espresso Express. Got it. Fair trade fun zone. So let's go ahead and listen to this real quick. Ilmo stood in front of the parade float, turned dramatically to his crew. Now, imagine the murderer's arms moving. Stab, 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 and then Naki laughing. Everyone at Deerfest always plays it safe, not us. This monument to Watery's history, this work of art will sweep this year's awards. The overlap formed around Watery's dark past. The ritual to enter was tied to crafting the float. Art was the key. It had the power to let Saga in. All right, guys, because you guys are so obsessed with the stapler right now, I have a little something 
for you all. Is that a stapler or an altered item? Don't take office equipment with you outside the building. <laughs> True story. We just saw another OOP. But yeah, this is exactly how the rituals worked in uh, American Nightmare, where you would have to change the scene to match what's on the page by doing just random things, like setting up a parade float, and that's what caused the narrative to continue. Yeah, the entire page was scratched out and handwritten, which means we don't know what the uh, Alan's initial intention was for it. No oh, crap. Okay. Guess we're doing this. I was gonna try to just grab everything, but it's not letting Ink. me. Is missing a soundtrack? No. Uh, What's missing from the parade? There we go. Float? I need to put it together. I guess a toy knife will do. Okay, take it. Just leave me alone. Go away. Well, we're gonna grab all the other things real quick, Nicholas. We're gonna grab the uh, the Puko knife. We're gonna grab the cassette player, and then go get the other day. thing real quick. Thank God. And then we're gonna head back to the well because uh, we're gonna have to look at um, read the. No, not that way. We're gonna have to do the um, profiling on Thornton and Mulligan to get the. Moose helmet or the moose skull. For some reason, I thought there's a manuscript that would spawn here, but maybe it's after we finish the overlap. Yes, Sandman of Chaos, there, w there are still talks about, um, a TV show for Alan Wake. That's still ongoing. I can't see anything. There's one. Shoot! Got it. Yes, well, batteries. Now there's less Perfect. Monsters. Beautiful. We have gotten no information on the progress of it. I know that, uh, I want to say a couple years ago, we have an update that the talks are still ongoing, but we still don't have any confirmation on anything past that. The fuse is missing. Can't operate the ride without it. No, 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 no. I picked up the fuse. Oh, there's the fuse. Okay. I was going to say, I did pick it up. Any 
And there's supposed to be a manuscript page here. Maybe it spawns after the fact. There has been a few uh, changes so far, uh, Pregyesh. I mean, the intro has been different. There has been some new manuscript pages. There's some minor dialogue differences. Um, in Alan's side, there is a new video of his ranting, watching himself write, and there's some other new videos for Alan that are going to come out. Plus, the whole ending is going to be go. different. Now I just need to Maybe stop not entirely it different, but... Let me get to that circuit board down there. I, I haven't finished it, so I don't know what the changes are to the ending, but we'll find out. <sighs> and there we go. It's also lucky you found another way out, otherwise you'd be kind of SOL right there. Yeah, now it spawns, okay. Deputies corrupted. Let's go get into light before we listen to this. Well, see, the thing is, like... I don't think in the quote-unquote Alan Wake TV show would work best if they just recap the story of the game. I think it's better if they do other things. Like, they, they fill in gaps around the story of Alan Wake, if that makes sense. But not just do a one-for-one -one remake. The killing of Monica Thompson was a terrible mistake. Thornton blamed Mulligan's itchy trigger finger. Mulligan blamed Thornton's shitty pastrami sandwich. They only agreed it wasn't their fault. No one will find her corpse. We'll hide it. They fed the body to the maw of a crumbling well, like the murderous Huatari brothers did long ago. They lied to everyone. The word would never get out. But a secret like this doesn't die. It grew inside them, like cancer. The darkness taking over, filling the shape of them. I mean, technically speaking, wouldn't that be an interesting way to do it? Is that they do a quote unquote Alan Wake TV show, and because they have Ilk, uh, Ilka doing the actual uh, act, the acting part of it, but he can use his own voice because guess what? Thomas Zane is the. Uh, I'm pretty sure um, Ilka voices Thomas Zane in this, meaning that the TV show can follow the events of Thomas Zane and Barbara Jagger back in 1970. So it's still so it's basically filling in an extra part of Remedy lore, and they can keep the original actor with the original voice, and it makes sense within its context by not having Matthew Preda voice him. So we would essentially get our Alan Wake show with a similar plot, but all the changes because of a live-action issue are taken care of because it's about Zane and not Alan. The materials listed for the parade float mention a mask. Where is it? Poor Mocha Moose. He never failed to amuse me. No, we know, Ilmo. There is such a thing as too much coffee. Mocha will live on in a place of honor. He lost his head. Mulligan and Thornton had one job. Mulligan and Thornton must know where the Moose Skull Mask is. Hmm. Alright, so what's going to happen the second we get more information on the Alan Wake TV show? Here's what we're going to do. Is we're going to start an internet campaign to tell Remedy, let me be on the writing team. Let me join in on it. Because <laughs> I would love to be part of a project like that. That'd be freaking incredible. mask is missing. Where is it? The dead brought back to life. The crown of the Grand Master. 
Atari well in Coffee World. Okay. So it's kind of sad that the moose skull is actually Mocha's skull that was bleached by these two. Hey, I'll deal with this later. I saw something. And there it is. Like I did in Cauldron Lake. The well here in Coffee World. I know the moose skull will be there. It's not gonna let me pick it up. Damn it. I was gonna hope it'd be like stealth this. Damn it. Where is he? I can't find the I I can't tell the guy that I actually did that to. Cut your shenanigans there, son. So right here is Mocha's skull. And if we remember into the uh, Poets Theater for the Alan's part of the story in the overlap, this skull came here, like this appeared here right after Alan found Thornton and Mulligan, the NYPD detectives, their corpses up in the projection booth after the Cult of the Word killed them both. And I believe it was Mulligan who was wearing this skull. And the second Alan interacted with it, it vanished and then appeared here at the edge of now the Now I need to bring well. the mask to the float. And of course, we have the uh, character of Ilmari, played by Mulligan wearing the same mask as well. The moose skull goes here, obviously. There's your knife. Some creepy laughing for atmosphere. Don't you guys think it's actually kind of amusing that um, in Alan Wake 2, these kinds of sections don't really get much thought, but in American Nightmare, everyone hated the ritual aspect. It's like, it makes no sense. It's kind of dumb. And I'm like, A we're doing the exact same thing here. Moving. Literally doing the exact same thing here. Down, down, down the well. Feels like Silent Hill too. Oh, whoa, 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 Yep, there's the clicker. There's Alice's hand. <coughs> what the hell? I, I can Where get behind that. The packaging is like it's just like how they explained why we were doing it in, Al in American Nightmare was that oh, this is what causes reality to change. Whereas in this is like oh no, this is what creates the overlap to the other reality. So it's the reason behind doing it is different, I would argue, and that's why the packaging is different. And that's why the loops in this game work better than they did in American Nightmare, because in this one, each loop is different rather than we're retreading the exact same plot points and just altering it a little bit. So now what I find interesting about this one specifically is that this overlap with the Hotari well is the sauna. Because this is the same room that the, uh, for the sauna and watery.
Personally, James B., I think the whole reason why there was a lot of uh, upsetness when it came to American Nightmare is just a lot of people just didn't like the gameplay in general. So people will th therefore nitpick other things in the narrative and other things in the game as a result of that. Which, I'll be honest, like, American Nightmare is not the best work, but it's short and it gets its point across. Now, if that was a full, like, 15-hour game, I don't think I would be as forgiving to it, but since it's... You can beat the whole thing in three hours, so... It's not really a big deal. Mulligan and Thornton in the wreckage of the morgue. Shadows on their faces. Thornton did his best woman's voice. I'm a stuck-up FBI bitch. I'll make a big fucking mess and get these dumb backwater cops to clean it up. Thornton turned to his partner. These government motherfuckers. Next time, Mulligan, I'll tell her. You got no clue. You let your own kid drown. You're a fucking fraud. Mulligan leered. Pinning the murder on the bookers would have fixed this whole goddamn mess. But their kind always sticks together. I reckon we should show the bitch who's boss, Thornton. Shadows crept over Mulligan and Thornton. Inside them, they grinned. And here we go. No, Nathan, I think this was this was in the original game, it's just that most people didn't go into the sauna to collect it. This is just a missable one. There we go. Now, another little piece of uh, tidbit detail, which I found kind of humorous. Um, because for some reason, we always seem to come back to this. But luck and probability department in the oldest house. If we remember, there was actually some information about horseshoes in the luck and probability department specifically if the opening of it is pointing upward it acts as a chalice that's catching the luck and holding it now if the horseshoe tilts and turns facing downwards that means all the luck is now dripping out of it so this right here is a symbol of bad luck thank you luck and probability department you are very educational I was checking to see if there's anything we can loot. Oh, no. Maybe this is lootable stuff. I guess in this fictional reality, Logan fell into the Hattari well, and that's how she drowned. Makes sense, considering how close it is to the trailer park. The story is trying to take Logan. I can still stop this. I need the clicker. Okay, round two. Anderson, the director. He has it now. Wake? I saw him this way in the other overlap. Now, this is overlapping with the third part of Alan's story. So, the first one lines up one for one. Saga's second round ends up being 
Alan's third round, and then Alan's third, and then Saga's third round is Alan's second. So even the loops are out of order. It's a loop, just like before. Mocha's funeral. Rest in peace, Mocha. Ilma Koskela stood in front of the small gathering of Coffee World employees and bikers. He read from a piece of paper. Mocha was a wonderful moose who deserves a place of honor in the Hall of the Calavella Knights. His skull will become the crown of the Grand Master. The dead brought back to life. There was polite applause. After the service, Ilmo had the body hauled off to be turned into moose steaks. Mulligan and Thornton were told to get the head cleaned. They both grabbed an antler. What the hell, Thornton? I got it, Mulligan. They brought the skull into the workshop to boil it and bleach it. They grumbled. Wanted to just get it fucking done. It was just a stupid animal. But I guess moose steak is never a mistake, huh? Hmm. Yeah, no, Nora was the one who drowned in the bunker um, where the Valhalla nursing home was at. And this was like, I want to say in like the 90s. This was long before Logan was even born. I don't remember the exact timeline on that though. There's Thomas Zane's face right there. Very briefly. This is a nightmare. I can't get through that. Nope. I need to look for another way through. Opti, thank you for the save, buddy. Opti is going to guide us through this overlap. But more specifically... It's a scene from... Utes and you. It's from Nightless Nights. Because remember, this is overlapped with the Poets Theater, so this is what they're playing at the end of the theater section. So that's why it's this specific one, but it's interesting that this is what shows up, and it's Ozzy's voice that is what's guiding us through at the same time. Almost like the details of the overlap here are done intentionally on behalf of our God of the Sea. This just reminds me of the Lost Woods following the music. Reload! Nope, don't reload! 
damn it. I need to start saving some shotgun ammo because I'm running low. Honestly, you want to... Okay, weirdly enough, you want to know... The only reason I did not platinum this game the first time I played it was because I didn't use the coffee mug charm. That's the only trophy I didn't get. Meaning I didn't die while holding that. Ati! My boy. But yeah, I would have platinumed it in Run Run if it wasn't for that. Which I find hysterical. That's correct, Master. Um, more, more. Did. The overlap is just where the dark. It's a Venn center point of the Venn diagram between reality and the dark place. And the reason it forms is because things are happening in the dark place that thematically, in in a literary sense, echo what's going on in reality. The trap. The human. Trapped? How? What does that mean? Here we are, round three. So who left this playing for us to follow? Because it feels like this radio was left turned on specifically for us to follow it through the woods so we can find it here. Otherwise we would have been stuck in that cycle and never able to climb down the well. I am actually going to pop out our rifle for this one. I think that's good. Actually, let's grab this ammo over here. I think we're good. I see some talk about the uh, the Valhalla DLC for God of War Ragnarok. I do plan to uh, stream that after we finish this. And then we're going to be probably doing Layers of Fear at that point. Grab it, grab it, grab it. I for 
get for some, for whatever reason these guys don't uh, get staggered from that. Yeah. Next time they won't be coming back. All right, we're good. <laughs> Story, but has it now? It's the key to escape. What do you mean, escape? You're already out. So is Scratch. Celebrate. 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 Making progress. I wrote to be the story's hero. Save her family. Save us all. Save her family. Are you talking about my family? Yes, yes, you know it's working. You just need to keep going. Did you put my family in the horror story? I keep seeing him in overlaps, but he's already out. Are these visions coming from the past, when he was still trapped in the dark place? I have the clicker. I can stop this nightmare. Boom. Time to vibe, everybody. Let's just sit back and vibe. Well, the reason we're doing uh, Layers of Fear next is because a Patreon voted on that, like, a while back, and I just haven't gotten to it because Alan Wake 2 came out. Losing my child, taken by the tide, nowhere to hide, I don't know, broken bonds, broken souls. Bloodstains on the phone, baby, calling home, but to no one home. If I'm a superhero, then where the hell See, it's stuff like this, which is why I say Remedy should have won original soundtrack as well, because think like all of these songs are just such bangers, man. Um, so, Prof Comic, I do plan to do another uh, discussion um, regarding New Game Plus and the Aftermath, but it's going to be someone new, someone who is familiar uh, with the channel and has made previous appearances on the channel, but is not. Uh, it's not going to be uh, Max or Matt at this point. That's all I'm going to say on that note.
Yeah, this isn't Bo. We'll, I'll, I'll tell you in a second once we get back to the mine place. in a hard task and you finally overcame it, it's always a good feeling. Absolutely beautiful. All right, let's get going. Wake said he could use the clicker to undo the horror story. I need to get back to Bright Falls to Casey and Wake. I should check in with Casey. Okay. Let's take a look around. So there is, it looks like there is a new manuscript page out here in the workshop. So let's go check that out real quick. Oh, dude, I don't know if I can... The thing is, Nathan, uh, like, I've played a lot of the Final Fantasy games. I very rarely finish them. Like, massive RPGs are really tough for me to get through just because of how much time it takes to get through them. Okay. I mean, it's giving me a lot of rifle ammo. Is this new or is this old? Deputy makes a grave mistake. No, this is from the original game. Hey, I lied. Stop right there. The shape stumbled out of the dark toward Deputy Mulligan. Thornton was doubled over, coughing. A chunk of cold pastrami caught in his throat. Bring it, fucker. Mulligan fired. Thornton hacked the pastrami out of his windpipe, opened fire with his partner. The monster fell. They kept shooting. The thrill of domination. This was the cult of the tree. Not one tree. A forest. Secret knowledge in a deer mask. The last line of defense. yippee ki motherfucker. Bright Falls fucking finest. They crept over, pulling out their flashlights. The horror. This is Monica from the tackle shop. An innocent woman. Thornton's pastrami came back up. Yep. They accidentally killed an innocent victim and the grief... Or I wouldn't say the grief, I would say the guilt of it is what ended up leading to them being taken. I need to get the clicker to wake and close this damn case before my family gets dragged any further into it. Okay. Done. Great, we got more. Okay, let's see what we got. Hold the fire button to activate auto fire mode. I mean, at this point, let's go ahead and do the magazine. Saga had lost count of how many shots she'd fired, but she was sure it must have been more than she had in her magazine. And yet, she'd not run out of ammo. As if the magazine had grown to fit more bullets, she fired again. As if. Because that's what happens, is magazines just grow on their own. You know, you know that, that's exactly how that works. 
I mean, let's be real. When it comes to those massive RPGs, I've been working on Persona 3 for over a year, and I'm still not done with it. Just to give you guys an idea. It took me a year to beat, to get through a Persona 4, and now this one's... Yeah. I'm going to try to uh, save some flares for now. I'm I'm not waiting for it. I'm I'm not going to replay it. Like that's the thing with me and Persona is they're amazing games, don't get me wrong, the narratives are great, the lore and everything all the details in it are freaking incredible, but I can't see myself playing through those games more than once. Just because of how long, how big they are. I don't have that kind of time. I mean, I, I work a full-time, usually 50, 55 to 65 hours a week for my day job, not including what I do for uh, on YouTube and all the research I do for the script writing. So it's I, I legitimately just don't have the time to play those kind of games. Plus, I manage a household, <laughs> which takes up a lot of time, too. Let me see. So it's locked over. We can't do that until we get the bolt cutters, which is fair. But we can go back to the trailer park. So let's go ahead and do that. Because the, the water has receded there, so we can do a few things. I could have sworn there's a manuscript right here. Come on, Casey. No answer. David. Pick up, pick up, pick up. Hey, this is David. Leave a message. David, can you call me back, please? It's urgent. Please. Why isn't David answering? Is Logan all right? How does this all work? Has a horror story already gotten her? Let me- It's not letting me pull out my weapon! Because she was talking, it literally would not let me pull the weapon out. The flooding water. I should look around. See where the water was hiding. Dick move, game. Dick move. Okay, let's go ahead and finish scouring all the stuff here now that the water receded. So we can't get into this one yet, because we need the bolt cutters, but we can get into these other ones. There's another cult stash. The woods will swallow you whole. Challenge accepted. See, I'm with you on that, Can, um, for ZK regarding Saga's daughter being actually dead or not. Like, personally... It, it's a very complicated topic, because I 
don't think that Alan truly thinks he's putting her in harm's way, but he's using the threat of losing her child as the motivating force for Saga. Because again, one one of the most primal instincts when it comes to your young in danger is the mama bear coming out and defending her child. Like, that's one of the biggest aspects of the mother archetype when it comes to the will to fight and the will to destroy. I mean, look at, like, ma literally mama bears. Look at a lot of females or um, the uh, species in the animal kingdom. They sometimes are far more vicious as a result of protecting the young. So I think it's putting Logan in the middle of the story as collateral is kind of giving her that extra, not only incentive, but the extra ferocity that Saga needs to be successful in the story. Now, that might be fucked up. <laughs> that is a completely fair assessment, but it serves a purpose. Graphic novel ideas. Mr. Skarsgård, thank you for your proposal. Starlight Symphony sounds like a wonderful project and a very creative idea. However, our publishing house will unfortunately have to decline at this time. We wish you all the best in the future. Keep dreaming. With best regards, William Portman. So once we get the bolt cutters, we can actually see some of the Starlight Symphony um, comic book, which is what the Skarsgård's working on. The keys. I moved the keys somewhere, flooding can't wash them away. So we already got that. Alright. So this is from James Johnson to Megan Johnson. Now remember in the other uh, trailer over here, there's a letter from Megan to her mother about them relocating. It just says, Megan, just let me know you're okay, please. I miss you. I don't need to know where you are, just that you're okay. Just reply to me. You owe me that much. So... I, there's a situation going on here with Megan leaving. Now, she does mention a gym, which would be the nickname for James. So let's go over here real quick and look at that. But they mentioned that as him getting a job. So I don't know if they got back together, or if there was she left Watery to get away from him, and then they later got back together. I don't know. Or if this gym is a completely different person. But there's some kind of narrative, like, subplot thread going on here. This letter right here. From Megan, talking about Laura's doing well, uh, Jim's working hard, and landed a promotion, and all that other fun stuff. So, who knows? Honestly, Draco, I probably won't be able to play everything in the Persona series. Just, it's, like, I'm not going to have time. It's like, because, like, I can understand the perspective of Alan's, if he's even gotten, if he's even directly involved in it, but using having Logan as collateral to fuel Saga's uh, ferocity and her motivating force behind the plot. But using specifically Saga, it's she's immune to it anyways, so it's kind of like you have your own MacGuffin built into the character, so if, let's go on the if, Alan is using this for a motivating force intentionally, he doesn't think Logan's in any actual danger because he believes that the story will work itself out. Because he has that much faith in Saga as a character. Now, if it was anybody else, then it would be a completely different story. But it's 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 it's, it's a difficult topic. And I don't think I've fully settled on my thoughts on it just yet. Mm. <sighs> Do -do -do. 
do, do. People need to clean up their houses here. I swear to God. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. Here's the Starlight Symphony thing. Here it is. Starlight Symphony, hair covering the logo. Does hair do this in space? I don't know. What is Rocket connected to? Move foot out for a better silhouette. In space, no one can hear you sing. Make the text big. Maybe more eye-catching font choice. Okay. Comic book story idea. A literal space opera, a sci-fi musical with an alien love triangle, a burner mystery. Aliens meets the rear window. Sunshine meets the sound of music. Musical parts drawn in black and white and negative colors. Singing is rhyming. Rhythm is visual. Break the fourth wall. Go all out. This is going to be my best work yet. So, do you guys think this is going to be another episode of Night Springs right here? I mean, like, can, you know, we, we can discuss whether it's a moral thing or not, but we can't really... We can't really deny the fact that Saga will be more engaged and take care of the problem to a better degree if Logan is in danger. Like, we can say that's completely messed up, but we can't deny that this is giving her that extra incentive. And, like, we're getting into the topics of Alan's morality in this, and you also have to take into account that Alan's half insane right now, and also that he's not really creating a lot of things. He's seeing things happening in the future, and then later saying, okay, and he's transcribing what he witnesses. So time, these events could have already happened, and he just kind of wrote it down. But it's also confirmed that Saga was called out here by herself. It wasn't Alan that brought her here. She came out here to investigate this, and then after she showed up is when he recognized her. So it's... And we also... The other thing to take into mind is when you get into the chaos of the human mind, there is little to no control over it. Like, we're applying morality to... The same morality... It's not the same morality as someone just sitting there and writing a story. It's someone who's literally insane, and since Thomas Zane is involved, he's probably hopped up on booze and drugs, hallucinogenics and other things like that that are all filtering in into the work, so it's not him in his right mind. No, it's just like, I've seen a lot of people try to argue about him being a horrible, horrible human being. It's like, no, you need to take all these factors into account. child doll and that's going to be representative of Logan right there cute like the braids oh I, I wasn't I wasn't even really addressing uh our co previous conversations, Canadian. I was just talking in general because I've heard this from the fan bait from some of the newer fans mentioning it and some other internet articles and stuff like that talking about it. So I wasn't really directing that towards you at all, Canadian. I'm just, just talking out loud. Another one of those rhymes. The old fisherman had great luck. His catch at sea was beyond belief, but the hungry guest found relief in the fisherman's bounty truck. No, that's not right. No, it's the B. Where is it? Oh. No. Oh no. <coughs> I forgot there's another one of these around here. I forgot about it. So 
I mean, a great way to look at this, um... Has anyone seen Forbidden Planet? Because that film kind of sums up my thoughts on the whole situation. Okay, so my question when it comes to these is what is the narrative difference between the wolf doll or the symbolic difference between the bear doll and the wolf doll? So I'm not going to say much here just in case anyone hasn't seen the film. But it basically involves what happens when a super advanced society, completely moral, is given access to things that they... And it reveals the herald of darkness inside the entire society. And that's really all I'm saying past that. Is that even when you're the best person ever, there's going to be twisted stuff that you can't control. And it's impossible to control. That's it. Okay, and the bear broke onto the thingy over here and started dragging Jesus. fish everywhere. get stuck there. I love how you got stuck on the other Taken's corpse. That's beautiful. I'm not going to pick that one up. I'm going to leave it. Just because I have too much many already. If I need one, I'll come back to it, but I don't think we're gonna need it. You piece of garbage. You made me lose one of my arrows, you shithead. Well, the only reason I'm, um, bring up that, uh, the reason I'm probably not going to talk about Forbidden Planet right now is because I do plan to include that in the uh, Remedy Book Club. Because it's it's a very relevant story, um, in relation to it. Speaking of which, um, Kenyatta, because I, I just wanted to touch base and see if you'd picked up the uh, book that we're reading as a group. And if you started it yet. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if Casey was intended to be the original hero. But at the same time, back in 2016, we had the return trailer, which showed uh, Saga and Casey back in Quantum Break. And in that one, Casey gets killed, and Saga then takes over the investigation. So it implies that she was always intended to be the hero. You have started reading. Gotcha. You barred from the internet um, archive. Cool, cool, cool. Like, it's really, like, you don't get to see how much Remedy is involved in that book until essentially the last, like, five pages, unfortunately. <laughs> Great. Oh, come on. I don't know why I can never 
evade. I can never evade these guys. Like, I can never not get hit by these fuckers. You know what? Let's just do this. Reload. And then go back out there. I'm really running low on ammo right now, though. This is not good. Did they just despawn on me? Are you serious? It's going to despawn. There it is. Okay, at least I got my arrows back. I'm really running low on ammo though. Come on. There we go. Well, now there's less monsters. Yeah, but I'm... Oh, gosh. Hey there, PDX Jake. Thank you so much for the donation, buddy. Uh, you're awesome, Dean. Love the streams. Thanks. Dude, absolutely. It's my absolute pleasure. I think I'm going to have to switch over to the rifle for a little bit. Yeah, because I need to conserve ammunition at the moment. Let's go ahead... Yeah, let's just do this for a while. Okay. So there's a couple more random things we're going to get in Watery. Um, there's the trailer. That's the FBC substation. There is a cult stash. And another manuscript page. And then we're probably going to end off stream at that point. Oh, no. 100% Candy. I'm with you. She's a... V she is un a unique character. Like, I, I th personally, I think she is the only person that could succeed in this situation in the world because of the mixture of Dor and Anderson uh, traits. No one else would be able to pull this off. This bridge got fixed quick. Hold on. G give me a second. Okay. I mean, I have an entire... I think I mentioned it during the previous stream, but I have a lecture that I'm working on that's discussing why she's so relevant and why she's so important to the plot. Or, more specifically, why she is unique in her ability to succeed in this endeavor. I mean, PDX Jake, like... I presumed up front that we were going to be having playing have two playable characters. Like, like, it, like years before they even showed the trailer, that's what I presumed. Because you kind of have to. You kind of have to show both. Bailey ran around the corner as the street lamps flickered and went off. It was in front of him, a glitching cloud, a dark, boiling monster. Looking at it felt like what a stroke must feel like. He was sick with fear. He fell. The dark presence ripped into him, swallowed him, filled his lungs and his brains with dark water. Bailey saw a snarling face in the darkness. Then he realized it was his own face. He was snarling. He was standing in the street in the dark, and he was snarling. He was snarling, he snarled. The monster was gone. The darkness coiled around him in tatters and wisps. He was the monster now filled with rage. He was the monster now filled with rage, he shouted. 
See, like this is again showing that the taking kind of just repeat things that are on the in the manuscripts. But anyways, okay, so now we gotta do the other one. Oh god, this is the math crate. I forgot, this is the one that's the math problem. I'm gonna go do the FBC thing first. Oh, yeah, um, so I'm gonna be, you know what, I probably should just make a public note about what book we're reading for the book club. Just so everyone can catch up to it. So basically what we're doing for the Remedy Book Club, it's a new segment I'm doing on the channel where, um, uh, the Patreons are, we're all gonna basically get together, we're gonna start discussing either a film, watch it together if it's blind for me or for everybody if it's not. Um, or read the books together, we'll have a discussion page set up just for the patrons to work with, but I will be releasing a video after the fact to disc to go over all the connections and how thematically it works with the Remedyverse. But the book we're um, reading right now is called The Unpleasant Profession of Jonathan Hogue by Robert Heinlein. I should, I'll put a community post up about it. But hopefully by the end of the month I'll have a video, or at least have that done, and then we'll work on the video for it. There's the maiden doll. Different from the mother. Okay. Dearest, when are you returning? I've been waiting for so long. I miss you. Send me a letter as soon as you can. It's lonely here, and I pine, your fair maiden. Lords and ladies, my dear maiden, I'm out of luck and out of means. I'd love to come back home to you soon, but alas, I must gather my strength and my funds first. Don't forget about me. I'll be with you sooner than you think. Yours truly. Dearest, it pains me to hear you not be arriving, but I'll keep waiting until you do. I would never forget about you. How could I, your fair maiden? Well, okay then. Maiden waiting failure. I just updated you. I haven't had any success with setting the stage yet. Even the letters from the characters themselves are no use. Do you have any tips on what I should try next? You're Michael's, your junior assistant researcher. Um, so there are no results. The propping has been proven to be effective, according to Dr. Campbell, but it's something in the rhyme itself. Is it too mature, too direct? Maybe we should add complexity and charm to it. Try something different approaches and get back to me. All right, thanks. I'll add some complexity and charm. This really is a great use of my master's in uh, applied physics. Okay, so what this shows us is there is two other researchers working under Campbell that started messing around with things. So... I didn't think about this before, but it's possible that some of these rhymes were written by Michaels and not written by Campbell. Would it defeat the purpose if I asked how it connects to Remedy? Well, the thing is, it's not actually connected to Remedy AMR. It's just the, the story itself has vibes and themes that are similar to uh, stuff that can be found in Remedy games. I mean, if, if anyone wants a teaser, um, basically the teaser of The Unpleasant Profession of Jonathan Hoag is that the titular character doesn't know what he does during the day. So he'll leave his front door and then his memory snaps back to him coming home. He has no idea what he does for work, but he knows his bank account's always full, he knows his mortgage is paid for, and he has all of his amenities, but he has no clue what's going on. So he hires two private detectives to basically follow him and try to figure out what he does for a living, what his profession is. And that's all I'm going to really say. There's a rhyme over here. There was once a faithful girl. At home she stayed, and there she prayed for her lover to return. But he collected fair maidens just as he did. Their stolen riches and broken hearts. Oh, we all know what they're talking about here. <laughs> this is a spurned lover right here. Staying at home okay, while the guys are running around. Yep.
And I'm not going to pick that one up. Because that is just overkill. Do we? What do you mean, do we, Kenyatta? No, like, I don't think this is... I mean... Oh, I wasn't even thinking about that. I was just thinking about it in the first layer of that poem, which is just the maiden at home while the man she loves is out basically just collecting maidens, so to speak, just on the abstract and the mundane sense. But if we're going to talk about how it connects to the remedy ver or to the, this setting, I mean, Cynthia could potentially be that particular maiden that's... Cynthia or Rose, maybe? I don't know. I mean, but that would imply that Zane is kind of a player and he was messing around a lot, but... That'd be more from her perspective because it was very well understood that him and Barbara were a thing and she just kind of wished she, he was with her. So it's not like they were together and he was stringing her along. That really wasn't the case. I mean, kind of like Severance. I've never seen Severance, but I know its general theme. That it's similar to that, but this was written in, well, I think, like, 1950s? Show that Something like that? Today, eh? 1960s? I, I had half a mind to come down and start dancing. Oh, well, why didn't you? You've got to grab life's gifts while you can. It feels like Zane from the Dark Place would do, possibly. Another one of those Great. cult boxes. We have the math problem. Great. Great. All right. Where's my pen? I don't have my pen. Shoot. All right, there are three batteries, B1, B2. They have a total of 1,600. B2 has 128 amps more than B3. So B equals C plus 128. Great. Hold on. Okay. B equals C plus 128. B and then also B equals A2 B equals A2 and then A plus B plus C equals 1600 great I remember not being able to do this properly the first time around. Okay, so if that's the case, so we have three A, so B equals A2, so we have three A plus C equals 1600. But C equals B minus 128. So B minus 128 plus B plus B divided by 2 equals 1600. I, I think I'm doing this wrong. I'm not even going to try to do this math. Algebra was never my best subject. Um, cult stash solutions. <laughs> One of these days I'm just going to remember it. Four, nine, six. There we go. I'm 
I'm not even gonna bother. Okay, I rhyme about a girl who fell for the wrong guy. Why is it always the girl who gets cheated on? Whoa, whoa, whoa. There we go. They need to fix that bug right there. Doesn't look right. It's got a little bag for all its maidenly needs. <laughs> Oh, I'm about a fisherman who lost their catch to a hungry bear. Okay. So now let's take a look here. So we do have a manuscript and containers over there. There is a cult stash. There's a rhyme there, a cult stash there, but there's another cult stash somewhere that we didn't... Oh, the ranger cabin! We didn't go to the ranger cabin! Crap, I completely forgot to go up there. Uh, we'll head there when we come back with the bolt cutters, because we're going to have to come back to do this nursery rhyme and this anyways. So we'll just wait until then, rather than running all the way back there now. Hey there, Melissa. We're just about to end off. We just finished the entire uh, local girl section. We finished the Hatari Well overlap of the Thornton and Mulligan fight, and then we're just doing a little bit of collectibles. This is probably the longest chapter in the game, in my opinion, so I'm perfectly fine just being able to get it all done in one go. So next time, probably tomorrow, we're going to start more on Alan's side of the story and go to the... What is, what is the next one for him? The hotel. We're going to go to the Ocean View Hotel. Yeah, cool. We're going to a cool guy's house to drink some brewskis. Are you coming? Hey, we finally got it. No, Ilmo. I'm very busy wearing a turtleneck and drinking wine like an asshole. Oh, dear. I know what Yaku needs. I'm a beer to the rescue. Bring out your inner Wolverine with I'm a beer. Wow, this is the best party ever. Thanks, Ahma Beer. Ahma Beer is a traditional Finnish lager, and we drink it the Finnish way. At the bar while actively avoiding small talk with strangers. Getting blackout drunk on a boat during midsummer and trying not to drown. In the sauna, using your beer can to hide your pipeli from wandering eyes. Partaking in the Finnish tradition of Kalsari Kennet, drinking at home alone in your underwear with no intentions of going out. It's not sad if it's intentional. <laughs> Alma Beer, your Finnish drinking adventure starts here. Hi. Hi. Sorry, I was just watching a commercial. What are you doing in here by yourself also watching that commercial? Alrighties. Alright, so that's going to be it, everybody. I will see you all probably tomorrow, where we will continue on and move on with Alan's story. And probably get through maybe two chapters for him. Because his are... I could get through a little bit quicker, because it's less about the full overworld exploration, but more about the dungeon solving. Hey, Isla Grant, thank you so much for the donation. I very much appreciate it. Busy life makes a second lore dive play taxing. Thanks. No, 100%. And I know a lot of people are probably not going to be uh, doing a second run of this just for that. They're going to re rely on just watching the cutscene compilations or seeing a video that just says, here's all the changes, here you go. But anyways, I'll love you guys. Take it easy, and I'll see you tomorrow, most like. Bye-bye.